Good evening, everybody. My name is Cameron. And I'm Amy Chow. And we are tonight here at the bar with an ex for a very special episode of Cocktails, as we normally do on these beautiful Wednesday nights. The theme that we have this evening is of fizzes and flips. A fizz is a drink that you may have seen out there in the wild that looks like it has exactly what it has in the name. A little bit of a fizzy nature to it. It could have like little bubbles up on top, it could have an interesting layer up on top, or it could be something that kind of looks like a glass that has just a tower of cloud foam coming out of it. Those are there are many ways to fizz. But on the other side of things, there are the flips. If you were to take that and flip it on its head a little bit, a flip is not necessarily the same thing. It's It comes from a common ingredient, which I'm about to spoil in a hot second if it wasn't already obvious by the decals on the board and the titles and stuff, is you use a different part of the egg. Preferably not spoiled. Preferably not spoiled. And I did just spoil it. It's egg. A fizzes, a, fi a fizzes, a fizz and a flip both use eggs. Different parts of the eggs are all parts of the eggs. And there's eggs in your cocktails. There most definitely is. In the cases of fizzes, it's usually your egg whites to produce a cool foam up on top that can create that fizzing effect. Or, in the case of your flips, you flip it around. I don't really know why they call it a flip, to be honest. I, I can't notice. believe you missed the opportunity to use the pun on the flip side. On the flip side of that sunny side down egg, because we're not looking at the yolk in the terms of the fizzes, I mean, on the sunny side of things, we have the yolk in the flips and stuff. It was an excellent opportunity. I'm joined by Amy Chow this evening as we explore the wonders of fizzes and flips because, you know, Easter happened over the weekend. Of course, you know, if y'all are the folks who study or participate in the Easter holiday, you may have some eggs left over from the holiday itself. I realize that I have eggs that are currently below a container of ice, so I'm struggling to get the eggs out without cracking them. The eggs are the start of the show this evening. It's not us here, the host with which to portray the egg abomination from the Easter Bunny's toll. We have many different eggs, and they're all of different colors and stuff. If we can flip the angle for a second, we should show the lovelies all these different beautiful, beautiful little things. So in our pile today are various different colors of eggs. We have some that didn't really know what was going on with it. Some that, that one looks possessed. grew an anatomical parts. And then we have other stuff as well, some that are a little more normal. I don't really know. None of these are flavored in a particular way. They just all got different colors and stuff. I think they're all kind of beautiful in their own special way. This one's got like a nice gradient to it. This one's like the sun, or it just looks like the yolk decided to leach its way into the outer part of the egg itself. And this one reminds me of the firing brimstone of hell itself. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. I think we'll switch the cocktail oh, angle. And then we'll get back to the main show of things. We have a number of different recipes prepared this evening, and I would like to leave it up to Amy Chow to choose where we start. Was there anything particularly on your mind that you would like to go for? Uh, off the top of my head, I mean, we do have a uh, whole host of uh, ones here. Okay, let's, let's see. Here. Ah! You're good. That's all me and my angle. Okay, so we've got the Bosom Crosser, the Dylan Collins, mm -hmm. Flip, Golden Girl, May West Royal Diamond Fizz, the Pisco Sour, Pisco Pisco the Sour, Porto Flip, the Ramos Gin Fizz. Ramos Gin Fizz. I'm really I'm looking forward to that one. I've heard very I've heard many things about it. We have two copies of the Ramos Gin Fizz. One is from a one is from a particular book, and one was one I found online. I wanted to see if they were different. They're really not. And then we have the Ruby Fizz. The Ruby Fizz itself. There are 10 different cocktails this evening that we've got prepared, and I know that we have the ingredients for. There's probably others out there as well. And if anybody does have suggestions for like a fizz or a flip that seems interesting to you, by all means, feel free to drop it. And if we have the ingredients for it, we'll mix it up. Depending on the amount of time that we have, which is three hours or so. It's cocktail time. It's like basically a happy hour time, all things considered. That's how you... Okay. Yep. So what do you think? Did any of those catch your fancy as the place to start things off? I'm... Um, I mean, the, uh, <laughs> the Bosom Crusher is a funny name, if we're being Bosom honest. It is a funny one, indeed. Indeed. The Bosom Crusher, I believe, if I'm correct in saying, has some egg yolk in it, so technically speaking, it's a flip. We could start things off with a flip, then we can flip it back around and do a fizz, and then we can flip back the other direction and do another flip and just kind of keep oscillating back and forth in a perpetual manner, despite the fact that perpetual that motion exists actually, do not happen. That per actually sounds yeah. like a good idea. So that's what we'll start out with. We'll start off with a flip known colloquially as the bosom caresser. Apparently, 
Despite its potentially uncouth name, the, bos the bosom caresser has been around since apparently the 1800s. So whatever this thing that a bosom is, or otherwise, people have been caressing it for at least the past 200 years. And as its form of a, of a cocktail, well, I feel like there's a lot of, I feel like there's suggestive jokes to be had there. In any case, we shall begin with a bosom caresser. I will place it up on the board and we will need a couple of different ingredients. We'll need some brandy, white curacao, some grenadine, and egg yolk. A lot of those ingredients are over on my side, but we will need an egg. Oh, and we're also gonna put it in a shaker. And this one actually starts out a little bit differently than the other cocktails that we have planned this evening. Interestingly enough, whenever you're shaking with an egg involved, you'll usually wanna do like a dry shake first. However, in this case, this one is specifically calling to do a wet shake early on without any sort of dry shake before it. And I think the reason you do that is because when you use like an egg white, you wanna emulsify it first before you get to like the rest of the drink itself. And this one doesn't have any egg white. It's just egg yolk. So I guess in that case, we just completely skip it. Okay, uh, question from my mm -hmm. knowledge and maybe some of the people back home. Sure. I don't quite remember the difference between a wet shake and a dry shake. So the wet shake in this case, it's not called a wet shake. Although, you, comparatively, you would call it the wet shake in this case. The dry shake does not ha doesn't have any ice in it, and the wet shake does have the ice in it. Oh, okay. Which, all, all things considered, I wouldn't consider an ice cube to be very, very wet, per se. But I guess, compare, I mean, even compared to the rest of the drink, the rest of the drink is a lot more wet than the ice cube itself, unless it's starting to melt, in which case. To all the lovely people coming out there, including Jasper and Corsmo, this sounds like an ex exceptional recipe. Let's go. It's Wednesday. It is Wednesday, my dudes. <gasps> oh, Wednesday. I was talking to my boss about that bullfrog Rest today. Rest in peace. R.I.P. R.I.P. I.P. I.P. Frogs. Caressing bosoms, or so they say. We're going to need a shaker for this one, as well as starting with this egg over here. In the meantime, I'm going to grab us some brandy from down here. I've got... Okay, do we want to use the tall shaker or the car shaker? We can use whatever shaker we want to. <laughs> To heck with it, I'm using the curse shaker. I want to see if it does the thing again. We have the curse shaker of love over here. It's love because it is both plaid and pink, and we like that. Egg, egg, or so they say. Where it stops... I, I don't really know. And we're also gonna need some grenadine. So technically I don't have any white curacao on us, but when I was looking for dry curacao, white curacao, the closest thing that I was able to find was this Citron Gay Extra Fine Orange Liqueur bottled in Mexico. It's actually just a different brand of Patron. So it's tequila. So this is just kind of what we have. Now I'm gonna grab some grenadine from our beautiful, what do you call this thing? It's a cooler. It's beautiful in every right of the word. I'm gonna mix things up. Grenadine. Indeed. It's the house grenadine. When was it made? Let's let's not share the date on that bottle. It's nobody's business except for our own. And um, I'm not happy looking at that bottle. Could you imagine if we caught salmonella not from the eggs, but from the grenadine that has definitely been in there? Definitely not since August of... I mean, I don't feel like doing the math there. We're gonna need some egg... E <laughs> I was about to say, we're gonna need some egg in our shaker. We will. But first, I'm going to start with some ice cubes instead. And I keep going into my freezer, but I think it's better to go in here where I got some ice cubes that have already begun to uh, aid in the cooling of everything else. Let's pop open this shaker and add an ice cube to it as I'm continuing to drip all over the place. So technically, you're supposed to let these things come up the temperature first before putting it in there, but you know, you know, we do whatever we want to. So the first thing we've got to do is we have to separate the egg yolk from the egg white. If we only want the yolk, then the white has got to go somewhere. And so I think, because we're going to be going back and forth between the flips and the fizzes and then that the flipping flip back to the fizz and stuff, however that makes sense, we should put the egg white in another container. I think we'll need a bigger one than that. Um, oops. We could use... Is there a pint glass back there at all? We can take any of the old fashioned glasses. For the most part, we're not gonna be using most of the old fashioned glasses because these fizzes are usually gonna go in like highballs and the flips are gonna go, or, or maybe the other way around. If it's a sour and stuff, it's gonna go in like, you know what, we'll get there, we'll get there. I'm we'll speaking out of my butt right now. Come to it. It's true. Harry says, did you do all the designs behind you? This here with all me, this with Amy Chow. This is all my handwriting. This is this is not my handwriting itself. This is a font that I stole from the internet. But yes, for the most part, all of this stuff is all hand drawn and stuff. Every single bit of it. Impressive, right? I know. So, I'm gonna separate the egg from the yolk. 
So I think the best way of going about doing this is we'll put the white of the egg into the glass here, and we'll just kind of use that as like the egg white container. Whenever we need more egg white, we can just go into the container until we accidentally put egg yolk into it, in which case... We make a normal egg cocktail. Exactly, just make a normal egg cocktail. So can I have that little oak yolk strainer there? Oh, that's what that, ooh. Oh yes, oh yes. If we'd like to switch the cocktail angle for a hot second, I want to show the people at home exactly what we're doing over here. So what I got here, a little egg strainer. Essentially, it works like this. You place it atop the glass that is going to collect the egg white itself. I'm gonna put this at a proper angle so that we can actually see what's going on. And then we hopefully don't screw things up. And if we do, well, that's fine. Crack. And a few little gadget, that way you're not playing cooking mama every time. There we go. That actually worked out perfectly. This eggshell is going in the bucket. And it's gonna have a whole heaping thing of eggy stuff today. So all the whites themselves are kind of, it's kind of hanging on there. If we kind of like finagle it a little bit, it should like kind of unleash itself. This reminds me of that thing I saw on the internet of the uh, the yolk separator that looks like a dude's nose. Oh my gosh. I mean, this stuff doesn't really look like snot. I that image in your head, but like. All right. I think it's mostly separated. So now, specifically calling for egg yolk in this one. Into our shaker. I'll put it back here. There we go. And this beautiful mess of snot is gonna go elsewhere. I will- I don't like- Oh my goodness gracious. Uh, hmm. Okay, so now we'll switch the cocktail angle back in the other direction. Awesome, awesome. And I'm gonna quickly refresh this page because apparently our view is not updated enough. Alright, I'm gonna- I'm gonna put the egg white over on top of our water supply because if we screw up, we're gonna screw up badly. And I just think that's the best way of going about doing it. So now we've got- kind of funny it never actually it never actually popped oh my goodness so should we show them we should show the people real quick All right <laughs> <laughs> the egg yolk hasn't actually popped that's yet even funny <laughs> that's really funny oh my goodness wow that's great oh my gosh you've got party hats to you've got party hats to hand right of course we've got party hats over here always party hats you got tiny ones on the thing over there and if we need more there is plenty plenty more um, on what thing? Oh yeah, they're right, they're right in between the stirring apparatus. Oh, right, of course, right in front of my face. See it. Indeed. Do you have a preference of color? Oh, no, 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 we don't need the party hats just yet. They have to work for the party hats. It doesn't just come so easily like that. Sorry, I got over eager. It's okay, everybody wants to do the party. Party, party all the time. Party 24-7. Party Wednesday nights, like the bullfrogs party, do. Party, party, you gotta party, have a party. Gonna have a party, 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 party. You wanna party. party. And speaking of parties, we need alcohol. Lots and lots of alcohol. Speaking of which, the alcohol that we're gonna start first with is two ounces or about 60 milliliters of brandy that we're gonna add to our shake over here. The beautiful part about this particular flip here is we just all put it in the container, we give it a big old shake, and that's it. That's where we start. Kaylin, would you like to do the honors of doing some porridge? Okay, is it up to the slime? Mm-hmm. The, the, the heavy side is going to be the equivalent of the two ounces in this case. Technically, that one there is a metric jigger. So instead of being like 59-ish milliliters, it's going to be 50 milliliters. But unless you're a chemist, I don't think you get a mind so much. All the way up to the top. About, that. Oh. <laughs> About the chemistry part. Yeah, I went. I originally went to school for chemistry. Mm -hmm. um, we saw how well that went. <laughs> it did not go well. And what are you up to these days? Far away from chemistry or kind of within the same place? Well, I mean, technically, I mean, I'm, I'm working uh, with uh, chemicals in a way. I'm, I'm a janitor, glorified janitor. But technically, as the janitor, you have the most power of anybody else in the district. You know have the knowledge of the chemicals, and you know how to use them, or potentially misuse them. Not to say that you would. I'm sure you are very, very good at everything that you do. And you never mix bleach with... Ammonia. Ammonia, yeah, just don't do that. Just never do that. The next ingredient that we're going to need is a single ounce of white curacao. The white curacao stand-in that I have is this citronga here. Um, again, it's it's from Mexico, which out of the different orange liqueurs that I found in the store, um, this was the closest place to the island of curacao, which is somewhere, I believe, in South America in the middle of the ocean. A single ounce of that, or in this case, in the metric jigger, it'll be Up like to the 25. Top end. Yep, exactly. If we're doing like partial measurements and stuff, we'd have to like kind of eyeball it inside of the jigger. So there. if we're doing uh, metric mm -hmm. measurements, does that mean this is going to end up creamier since the uh, 
the measurements are a little less than a uh a typical volumetric potentially so like it like a lot of the variation that we have here is the size of the egg yolk that we put in there and because eggs come in wildly different shapes and sizes for the most part we're not going to have too much of a consistency here so long as, for usual cocktail mixing so long as you're keeping the ratios just about the same it doesn't really matter whether you're using the metric side or the like uh the standard sign i suppose so long as your ratios are kind of the same but when we're talking the difference between like 25 milliliters and 30 or like 59 and 10 like it only matters a lot when you start like really really scaling things up because that's the difference between like a full container and like nothing at all and then the next thing we need splash grenadine. for our bosom caresser is a little splash of grenadine which opened surprisingly easily and that kind of has me scared it smells like pomegranate which i think means Definitely we're okay smells viable there we go there we go so just splash we have consent from both sides to continue using the questionable grenadine and the egg yolk has not popped yet this is incredible all right. If this is the last cocktail stream you all ever experienced, it was my fault, and it was because we were using grenadine that is almost two years old. My oh shit, I did the math. Whoops! It keeps really well, it's just got a lot of sugar in it, so naturally it's gonna be okay. No. Alrighty then. We're ready to give it a shake. This is the bosom. Oh my goodness, it started happening already! <laughs> There we go. Yeah, please don't beat me in the head. There we go. Hopefully that'll stay on this time. Okay, I'm glad you like you. Exactly. There's there's like, there's no, I mean, I'm sure there is technique on the shaking and whatnot, but the best thing to do is just like, enjoy it. I can't hear the music right now, otherwise we could shake along with it. Shake, 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 Sonora, shake it all the time. Shake, 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 Sonora, shake it all the time. Uh, ha, da, 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 Sure. Okey doke. We got a cocktail on this list that says it's gotta be stirred for like 20 minutes. No, sorry. Shaken for 20 minutes. Allegedly, the Ramos Gin Fizz. Supposedly. Indeed. So what we're gonna need here is first to get that thing open, and it actually worked. Wow. Okay. A lot stronger than you look. Next, we're gonna need a cook glass. And honestly, so uh, any who? the coupe glasses are hanging underneath that little side table there, and they're the ones with the thin tops to them. There are many. In the meantime, we've got Jasper saying, shake it like you mean it, Amy. Then that one's have, have a let, whoa, that's one hell of, hell of, hell, hell of an egg, egg yolk. yolk. What if the egg is still intact? <laughs> I would have been laughing my butt off, I let me tell you. I guarantee it's not. Oh look, a little floral pattern. Oh, indeed, I strength. actually just got these coupe glasses over the weekend. <gasps> They're very beautiful. Oh man, I cracked. Indeed. <clears throat> okay. Oh wait, we should do the cocktail angle and then angelically sing. Oh, ha ha! Ha ha? What did it work? I, I, I thought I did it. One more time! There we go. Oh, look at the beautiful thing! Don't fall over my beautiful holder of camera angles! Hello, you. Actually, I'm gonna do a little bit of some angle mixology. I don't even know what I'm talking about there to try to see if we can get these. Ooh. I'm gonna try to get the. The, the froth that's going to form the color on top. Okie doke. I think that is that is okay. Now what we need to do is strain it over the top. So I'm gonna grab a little strainer here. Just I'm so just get forgetting the all the steps. Oh, actually, I just remembered. This guy's got a straining thing. <clears throat> that was, oh dear. That's why we have napkins. And I've got a pair of pants for that very reason. <laughs> Amen to that. There we go. I can't do a drum roll. Lo and behold, it. it's yellow. I wonder why. It's because of the grenadine. You see, there's a really funny thing that happens when you add red to yellow, and it becomes yellow. kind of orangish. This is our beautiful bosom caresser. It has not caressed any bosoms this evening, but I think I'm the one who is at most risk here. 
So, and that is what it looks like. Just my one. my photo bot is not working today, unfortunately, and my camera lens is apparently very smudged. So, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to be taking photos from this angle because the the cocktail bot is not working, unfortunately. Also, I cannot seem to get a good angle. I mean, unless. Unless. All right, let's give it a switch. I'm taking way too long here. I got it. I got a perfect picture of it. Nice. Compressor. Great. I'm just gonna. <laughs> It's so cumbersome over here. Oh, wait. I, I think I know why it's called that. The bosom caresser? Oh, do tell. Do tell. I must know post haste. I'm sorry. I th Children, I, cover your ears. I, I spoke before I thought. I'm sorry. Oh, where were you going with that? Tell me more. <laughs> it's going to get a little not safe for life here. Children, cover your ears twice as much, because I know a you're still listening. A lot of times when my peers will be making boob jokes, they will make a, mm -hmm. uh, a gesture like this. A gesture like- Which is oh. kind of oh. how you have to grab the coupe glass. Oh! It's not a coupe glass anymore. It's a fondle glass. The glass with which to- Anyway, like, so like, so like, how, how does, how does bosom caressing taste? How does it smell? If you had to describe bosom caressing with, with, with a, an adjective that describes the olfactory senses, how, how would you describe it? Splendorific? Perhaps terrifying? Worse than it may sound? Definitely very spirit heavy. It's very spirit heavy. It honestly doesn't smell- The thing that I'm always shocked most about with drinks that have egg yolk in them is they don't really smell much like egg. But I guess for the most part, an egg doesn't really have too much of a, like, a gingy smell to it unless, like, it sits so around for a while. So long as it's within date. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And this one's freshly cracked. And this bosom, I mean, egg, I mean. And this- the glass is not cr cracked at all, because that would be- it'd be very- I don't have a cocktail in me yet. This is, this is awkward, y'all. Such is life. Such is life indeed. I must ask before we continue with this, would we like to alternate drinks or are we comfortable sharing from the same glass? I mean, I've had all my vaxes. Perfect. If we're go getting salmonella from the almost two-year-old grenadine, we're going down together. Hmm. Oh, that's heavy. That's, that's heavy. It is very... It is very, very brandy forward. There is a, it's, there's, it's, um, it's like softened out and a little dry from that egg yolk in there, but it's actually got a nice sweetness to it that, like, isn't completely lost on me. It is very, I'd say it's very, it's very spirit forward. This is especially the way that it smelled as well. I'm not getting much other than, like, a little bit of sweetness from, it's probably the grenadine in there, but I think it might actually be coming from that orange liqueur that we used, because I kind of, I'm familiar with the way that it tastes, and it's usually got like a very sweet, orangey uh, taste to it. So I think that's probably where it's coming from. What are your thoughts so far? Uh, well, it, it's it's definitely got like warm feeling. It's not it's not like too incredibly thick. Mm -hmm. De definitely, definitely like sip friendly. Mm -hmm. I would definitely think that it's nice It's nice and cold, so it's fresh from the shaker, and I feel like this is one of those ones that, like, if you're going to drink it, you want to drink it rather quickly, because I'm not sure how I would feel about a warm egg drink. Now, technically speaking, if this one survives until the end of the stream, we could try a warm egg drink if we just kind of let it, like, sit on its own and just, like, I don't know, infuse? Fester? Mold? I don't really know what would happen Let's with the stream. Let's not use around. those latter two terms for something we're supposed to be ingesting. Mm. To our next moldy experience. Lord help us. Mm. Okay, so Jasper asks, uh, did you crack like the eggshells? Yes, yes I did. Do not rub it in. The crack, the eggs have been cracked. It's true. Get it? And also thinks that legit just looks like liquid egg yolk. It is very much just yes. liquid egg yolk. I mean... Definitely more mouth friendly than mm -hmm. typical egg yolk, thank goodness. I've only had one experience where I ingested an egg on purpose, and that was chased with an IPA beer, which was very, very bitter and very unpleasant at the time, because it was mixed with an entire egg, not cooked, and we were in Maryland, and I was very drunk that morning. 
There's a name for that. I know there's a name for that. It's just not coming to mind. Things. I mean, it definitely is because we were all doing that. And it was it was a peer pressure thing. It was purely a peer pressure thing. Everyone else had like their lager beers and stuff. Your classic like Coors Light or Pabst Blue Ribbon. And I was like, I don't like that stuff. I'm gonna take this seven percent IPA and just down it. And um, that was my morning. That was my breakfast. Did I live to tell the tale? Yes, but not without an eighty dollar Uber fine the night of. Hmm. Yeah, you win some, you win some. These are some wild days. So the cocktail that we just covered is one called the Bosom Caresser, named potentially for the way you're supposed to hold it in the coupe glass, or what I also was learned called a champagne saucer the other night. Call it whatever you want to, somebody's getting fondled, and the somebody in this case is an unborn chicken. It uses an entire egg yolk in there, two ounces or about 59 milliliters of brandy, your choice, we used Corbel in this case, a single ounce of white curacao, or dry curacao, or about whatever you, whatever is closest to do so, um, and then you add a dash of grenadine in there and it's 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 a little just as much to sweeten the whole thing up i think so what do you think is this drinkable does it come to our side of the bar or should we leave it just to be act like this beautiful little like yellow oyster of decoration i mean i personally think it oh no you said oyster my brain went places um have you ever heard of a prairie oyster <laughs> yes i have oh my god it's an egg drink yes oh no I don't know if it's a flip though. I don't know if I can. It's, is it a fizz or a flip? Because if so, we're in danger. Because I'm very aware of what a peri oyster is. You're actually supposed to keep it intact, and it's one of those gag drinks. So, for the sake of our sanity and our stomachs, let, let's wait till the end to see if we even want to touch that. A prairie oyster? I don't know if I spelled this right. Prairie, prairie oyster? It uses the entire yeah. egg. It does not mix things up very much. It adds, I think it's also got some like Worcestershire sauce and other hot sauces and stuff in there and bourbon or something. It's it's like, it's it's wild. Bourbon, uh, definitely some uh, cracked pepper in mm -hmm. there. Um, yeah, though, that's all I remember off the top of my head. Egg, I feel like pepper, Worcestershire, mm -hmm. and I, th I think bourbon. That makes sense. I feel like if they were going to pick anything to just drink a raw egg with, it would be bourbon. That would be the thing to wash it down the best or worst with. I, I think it was like one of either like a gag drink or a hair of the dog thing. At some point in time, I definitely want to do like a whole like gag drinks episode like that. Where just like, it's questionable things. It, it should be so called something about like questionable things to put in your body part one. Wouldn't that just be bartending streams to... Mm -hmm. Begin with bartending streams to cringe to. We'll put this on top of a little coaster, just in case. That just in case things break, or just in case it decides to sweat on us. You know, it's a it's a it's a sweaty glass. It'll happen. All right. So we've covered cocktail one this evening, the bosom caresser in this case, which in this case of fizzes and flips, I would call this one a flip. It's got some egg yolk in there, which means on the flip side of things, some would say the sunny side downside of things, we're going to move on to one of our fizzes this evening, of which we have multiple. I think the ones that we have left are a Dylan Collins, we have a Royal Diamond Fizz, there's a Ramos Gin Fizz, and a Ruby Fizz. And in the meantime, I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup on these this eggy shaker over here, just to make sure that we've got... We also have the Pisco Sour. We also have the Pisco Sour, which I guess... Yeah, I well, it it's utilizes egg fizz, but... white, but it's not necessarily a fizz. Yeah, I think the idea of a fizz kind of comes into debate when we're talking about what I exactly a fizz happens to be. The fizz, at least from my interpretation of it, is something that uses at least some sort of, I guess, like egg white or like thickening agent inside of it, as well as some sort of like carbonated piece to it, like club soda or Pepsi or... A lot of these fizzes don't actually have anything bubbly in them, so I'm kind of at a loss to think. I'm kind of at a loss to <laughs> how else to describe a clip in this case. Can I ask a favor? Yeah, what's up? If we get to the ruby fizz, can we uh, reserve the demonic egg for it? Oh my god! Yeah. Oh wait, did I? I didn't crack that one yet. No, the demonic we, egg we from use hell? yes. Oh yes, of course. It just it just seems appropriate. It feels it feels appropriate there. Can I ask you to hand me one of the towels on your right hand side? Like this one or a bigger Indeed, one? Indeed, that'll be perfect. Thank you. Thank you very kindly. I'm still learning how to navigate the bar. To be fair, there is not a lot of space back here, and I won't be the first person to say that. You know, the bar with an X is an ongoing prog project. Doesn't it really help that Dexterity is my dump stat to begin with. I put all my stuff in 
Charisma. Dexterity's not my strong suit. But damn, can I smile at a camera while not knowing at all what's happening here? What's a cocktail? What is it? I just learned what I just learned what tearing was earlier today. We were making a chemistry joke before because Imicho has had experience in the chemistry department, and I she was we were making the we were making the simple syrup earlier, and she was like, "Oh, did you tear the scale first? And I was like, D "Did I did I tear it? Like rip it open?" And I learned of a new term in the process. For those who don't know, um, when you're measuring out ingredients, once you set the container, which is going to be holding that ingredient, like on the scale, you need to zero it back out. That way you're getting the actual measurement of the ingredient itself. And As it's opposed not to the container. Yeah, because <laughs> we were supposed to have like 100 grams of sugar and the glass itself was like 295 and oh. change. To be fair, yeah, instead of using like a regular like like glass to be storing things in, I decided to just use one of the glasses from up here, which are heavy crystal, apparently. Or at least in one case. Which there's nothing wrong with that. No, no, totally nothing wrong with that. We just have to make sure that we absolutely tear a new one on our scale first, or just tear it. That's also a valid option. No, not that I would know the difference. I'm ripping out my contacts. I've seen enough. <laughs> <laughs> Okie dokie. So, what do we do next? Which one are we choosing? We might have already chosen, and I have completely forgotten already. Um, you, you seemed pretty ex That was a promising sound. <laughs> um. <laughs> the honorary bucket makes a lot of weird sounds. Here's one. What the fuck are you chills? <laughs> I recall when we were, uh, ASMR. we were, uh, not blueprinting, uh, brainstorming mm -hmm. for this episode. You seemed pretty excited about the Pisco Sour ah! and one other. And the Mae West Royal Diamond Fizz? Yes. It's a mouthful. Oh, I'll, I'll explain why I'm really jazzed about that. I just have to write it on the board first. I must be disciplined enough to be able to remind everybody what's happening here. We're drinking. We're adults here. You can check our IDs. No, actually you won't, because then my entire identity will be compromised. Not bad. That's very, very bad. So this one is called, I think, the May West Diamond Fizz, and I think there's a- there, I don't remember if there's a story behind this one or not. I don't know if there actually is. Usually I'll have some notes in the bottom of the recipe doc, but I actually don't see one for this one. Okay. I think this came from one of your books, though, right? Um, yes. All right, so this was adapted from a recipe by Lanille Smothers, circa 07. Hmm. Whose mother? Lanille's? Lanille. Diamond Fizz. No, it, their name was Lanille Smothers. Rene Len Len Whoa. Lanille, Lanille Smothers. Alexa, who's Lanille Smothers? Uh. National attention to... One second. Alexa? Volume 7. Alexa, who is Linnell Smothers? From Alligator.com. Little Smokey Smothers was nope. one of the Alexa. Papas. No. Alexa. Mm -hmm. Alexa, who is Lionel Smothers? Sorry, I don't have an answer for that. It was saying the correct Lanille. thing the first time. Lanille? Oh, did I say that wrong? I definitely pronounced it differently in my head. How do we spell that? Le, oh. le, le, Neil. Should we smooth. probably get to this so we can? Lady Bourbon leaves Brooklyn. Laniel smothers. Mm -hmm. I don't see anything. I can't find it. You know what? It's okay. There is somebody named Smothers out there who liked Mae West Royal. Oh, it's the Royal Diamond. So much. Make cocktail for it. And the thing that got me really jazzed up about, about this particular cocktail was that it used a couple of very interesting ingredients in there. In particular, hot sugar and goji-infused bourbon, which I thought was very interesting. So this one... Wait, what if it was supposed to be Linnell and it was just very, uh... Linnell. Linnell? What does it say that on there? Oh, oh, it's at the top. Lanil Lanil Smothers, circa 2007. Hold on. May? Yeah, no, it's Lanil. Diamond. It is. We will have cocktail history, damn it. According to Flickr.com, 
Royal. Oh, okay. Nope. There's absolutely no history on Flickr.com. May West Diamond in the Rough. Washington Post. A soda fizz recipe. Le Nell Smothers. Fizz. Linnell Smothers Fizz. Beverage Boutique. Linnell's combines a bit of classy with the rowdy. May West Bottom Up. May West Royal Diamond Fizz by New York Magazine. There's no history there either. All right, this one just straight up uses an egg. Egg. I love how it's considered a fizz, though, even if it's got the entire thing in there. I dig it. How do we have to prepare that? Do we need to use a mixer or a uh, shake? I suppose we have. I, I don't even know why I'm asking. We are definitely shaking this bag. Yes. Bad all right. person. Bad girl. Bad boy. I don't know if May's... I don't know how they present as. I'll take it either way. So the thing that's cool about this one is it uses two unique ingredients, the hot sugar as well as goji infused bourbon. And as I was going around the store the other day, I was trying to find either of these things. Hot sugar is actually made utilizing some cayenne pepper as well as some regular sugar and a little bit of cocoa powder. Now, I actually completely forgot to go downstairs and get cayenne pepper and cocoa powder, so I'm gonna have to run down for those ones. But in the meantime, one of the, of the other ingredients we've got is this goji-infused bourbon. I went to Whole Foods, and apparently you can't find goji unless you go to the superfood aisle, which also has such things as monk fruit or spirulina, which is a type of algae, both in the green and blue form. Things that should also be making their appearances in cocktails at some point in time. Goji berry, I have in this little powdered way over here. Where's my, where's my goji berries? Goji, goji, goji. Goji, goji, goji. There you are. Comes in a container like this. It's kind of pink. And it is apparently high in antioxidants, mildly sweet and savory, and it's freeze-dried. Plant-based superfood by Navitas Organic. In fact, oh, super simple, super nutritious, superfoods give you the energy you need to live each day to the fullest. And being that our day is at about 8.30 in the afternoon, um, I guess we'll supercharge ourselves before we continue to imbibe in just more cocktails. Should at least uh, reduce the hangover. Absolutely. The other ingredients that we'll need is some pomegranate liqueur. They recommend using a palma, but I've got this guy, which is a gift from a friend, La Pinta, and a, te a tequila-based liqueur. We'll also need Brut Champagne. I went to the store and bought, you guessed it, an entire container of champagne, which evidently is not over here. Where'd I put that thing? I know I've got champagne around here somewhere. Is it down there? No, that's a, the, that's a different thing. Where did I put the champagne at? Is it in the fridge? Oh, never mind. I found it. It's right here. I kept it next to the refrigerator. Champagne. We need fresh grapefruit juice. I've got a grapefruit over here as well. And get all these things prepared. Here we go. And we should have a citrus juicer down on your right hand side. A lot of ingredients in this one. I don't know if it's prepped for grapefruits, but I've certainly made it work before. I hate that squeezer so much. I despise it very much so. Oh my goodness. It also said that we need to add macerated goji berries for the garnish, but we don't have macerated goji berries. We have goji berry powder though, so I guess in and of itself, it works as mashed in this case, for all intents and purposes. Okie dokie. So I'm gonna leave the recipe up here. Can I trust in you to start the recipe of the May West Royal Diamond Fizz? All right. Perfect. And I'm gonna go get cayenne pepper, try not to hurt myself down the stairs, and also... Cocoa powder. That's the one. Oh, don't hit the bucket. Four seconds of eggs. Wait. Egg. Egg. The hand from upstream. Here you go. Hmm. Coloring seems appropriate. Indeed. May West feels very... I think that was a pink one. Alright, so am I doing cocktail angle for this or straight angle? Let's we'll just do the regular angle for now so we get nothing close to it. Okay. I've been trusted to not break the bar. Let's hope he doesn't, uh, come to regret this. Alright, so to start we're going to need to prepare the champagne saucer glass by rimming it about halfway around with hot sugar and a grapefruit segment, which there is- There we go. I've got the ingredients for the hot sugar. Well, perfect. That was either you're quick or I'm slow. 
slow. I'm just very quick. I know this house like the back of my hand. Almost as if he lived there or some shit. You'd think so, right? So I think we need to rim the glass first, right? Yes, all right. So have so, some sort of apparatus to rim it within, which I think we could use a plate, which, lo and behold, apparently, I never brought back upstairs. But, hmm. I get a plate. There's got to be some source of shit. Ooh, I wonder if we, ooh, which glass do we use? Ah. If we use, ah, don't break. If we use this guy, all we need to find, maybe one of those containers is big enough? I'm gonna make things easy and go get a plate as well. It helps to know the place around. Okay, no. I'll be back. I will be back. I also have was the powdered sugar, granulated sugar, okay. granulated sugar. I think what we can do in the meantime is also start putting things into the uh, the shaker, just so we have the liquid kind of in one, and then me being the slow one, working on the garnish. Woof, woof. I guess I can't really argue with that. All right. So for the contents of the shaker itself, we are going to need to pour two ounces of bourbon. Where in the heck is the shaker? Okay, so we are going to need two ounces of the goji bourbon. Goji, goji, goji bourbon. Goji, goji, goji bourbon. Nice. I was, I was going to say like, hey, I didn't expect it to be that color, but it's it's bourbon. It's not like we were it's infusing true. in the vodka. And it's interesting too. Like, I was taking a look at the goji infused bourbon or uh, before stream started, and like, it's it doesn't look like it's changed color too much. A lot of the goji powder just kind of like sifted to the bottom. So like, to be perfectly honest. I don't know if how infused it is. I'm Can actually curious to see how it tastes. Please? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Beautiful bucket sounds. There okay. you go. Thank you. Indeed. We're going to need that back. Okay. In the meantime, I'll work on the hot sugar in the background. So for the hot sugar, he's going to be mixing four tablespoons of granulated sugar. I'm gonna eyeball it. A quarter teaspoon of cayenne. I'm gonna eyeball it. And a pinch of unsweetened cocoa powder. I'm gonna use my fingers. Grand choice. I'm worried about the cayenne. Aren't this might be intense. It quarter teaspoon. That should be like two floofs. Oh dear. Here goes okay. the cayenne. Do we do we have a knife? We do. On your right hand side, the one with the black handle would be the best for slicing. Okay. All right, we're going to get out our trusty cutting board because, you know, I'm not a total idiot who was about to, you know, cut it directly on the bar. No, 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 no idiots don't do that. Cameras do that, though. And I, I would consider any of us to be idiotic in the least bit. You know? Yeah, we're, we're fine. We just do things our own way. I wouldn't be the first time we've cut citrus upon the bar itself. Just like, you know, the bar just seems so cut-worthy. Okay. For lack of a better term. We're going to... All right, how much of this we need? Uh, an ounce. An ounce of fresh. Whoa, Does that look like enough? I think so. We can try to measure it out if we want to, but I don't know. How much of the, the um, how much of the actual flavor of the grape juice gets into it is beyond my comprehension. We're going to need an ounce total. I'm going for. Does that look like enough volume? Mm. <laughs> well, that looks like it could be an ounce already. Reaming the heck out of this grapefruit. <laughs> the cocoa powder and the cayenne are both very dusty, and I'm worried for everyone's sake that the cayenne powder in particular is the dustier, the dustier Trust one. me, we've gotten much worse things in our lungs oh around the new year. Oh my goodness. I've mixed a con uh, whoa, I've mixed a mixture of cayenne pepper, cocoa powder, and sugar. I just gotta get it all up. I gotta let it know each other. Hot sugar. After this, I'm pretty sure no one's going to uh, trust me around produce ever again. What are you doing with the produce? Oh my goodness. That's a very squeezed grapefruit. Nobody yes. get any ideas. Nobody. I'm just here for the juice. Yes, ma'am. Okay, where do I... Bucket? 
Bucket, toss it in the bucket. Excellent shot, right on the egg. If I missed it, I, my self-worth was going to deplete a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. It's okay, honestly, like the grapefruit juice on the floor just kind of helps take up more of the varnish. And the varnish looks terrible. I, I, I'm sure the property manager knows that, but it's fine. I feel like it. Oh my goodness gracious. It's a good thing I aimed for the bucket. Yeah, that was about an ounce. That worked out perfectly. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, you're good. It's just a cell phone. I got bounty paper towels. Totally not sponsoring this episode at all. That'd be silly. One sweet quicker picker hopper. Mm. Not these. There we go. I was actually making a bunch of stuff last night, and I spilled hot oil over my screen. I'm not. Can I didn't I... spill it, but oh yeah, by all means. We like to keep things cleanly around here. It actually has such a magnificent smell to it. Right. I say as I almost sneeze again. Something about citrus and mm. like cleaning. Just. Mm hmm. There's just something about it. A lot of citrusy chemicals out there. Yeah, right. Uh. So then mm -hmm. we need. We're gonna need the next bourbon. Ooh, did we put the? I think we put the bourbon in. And we did the grapefruit I... juice. And then we need the pomegranate liqueur. So you need about a half an ounce of that one. Okay. There's a line in here. Mm hmm. There's a line you said? I think. Hmm. Oh, for that, for that one, like a line in the actual jigger itself. Yeah. Would you like to use the grippy? Yes, please. The grippy is so nice to have. I was like, last night when I was trying to make dinner, I couldn't find one of the grippies, and I was like, where are my grippies? I can't find the grippies! And uh, I eventually found one or more of the grippies themselves. So I think we just kind of got to eyeball it. There's like little rings on the inside, but I think it's just a, um, just a, an course. aspect of the metal itself. Sweets, sweet pomegranates in tequila, I suppose. Ooh, do we have a comment from Jasper, it seems? Uh, what ideas could one get from a massacred grapefruit? Jasper, honey, you don't want to know. Just. You don't don't put your hey uh, don't remember AO3 the, and uh, FF.net. Oh my God! Definitely not putting any part of your body inside the grapefruit. Let the grapefruit go inside of you. Wait, no, 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 no. Uh, like in your face hole. You can eat grapefruit. You know? No, I was going to Begin suggest sweating. that you just shove in your like a banana. Yeah, yeah. You know, actually, I a we were going of mine, way back with the, uh, the references. Put a banana in your. Ear. What else do we need? An egg and some champagne, which not I think we yet, top it off. Not till the end. Oh, so we, no celebration yet. No, no celebration just yet. Not, no, not party time just yet. Not party time just yet. We have to wait on that. All right. Egg, whole egg. Here we go. Oh, oh, egg. There it is. It's just wow. It's just all in there. Yeah. Bucket. 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 <laughs> Chuck it into the bucket. Yes. Okay. And to to shake, shake well to emulsify the egg, nice. then add ice cubes. So we're going to do a dry shake and then a wet shake. Exactly! Now the dry shake is probably going to invert the pressure in there a little bit, so it might actually get... You might have to put a little bit okay. more pressure to keep things contained. Okay. Because it's going to want to explode. First, I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to do this. In the meantime, what is wrong with this? Oh, it, that's so that's the thing about the warm temperature on the inside. It's gonna want to keep the thing open. So all you gotta do is make sure that you hold it real, real tight. Well, you get the ice cube. Oh, we still need to prepare the glass. Indeed. So what we can do in the meantime is we have a little bit of this grapefruit over here. All right. And I'm just gonna kind of coat. Half of it. Half of the glass with the grapefruit wedge itself. And then we're going to dip it in that hot sugar. Which is hot, perhaps. Hmm. A little spicy. All things considered, a little spicy. Ooh. Oh, a little squirt. It's a nicely rimmed glass, all things considered. Half rimmed. Half rimmed in this case. With the hot sugar. I remember when I first saw the term hot sugar, I was like, um, where is this drink going? Okay, it's definitely looking... Emulsified. Yeah. Alright, do, do we want it or not yet? I think we gotta add some ice now. Okay. What I'll do is I'll add... I want a cold one. 
easily do well with some of the cold ice cubes that are stuck in the region. There we go. Yeah, that sounds safe. Yeah, everything's alright. These ones are very icy. Whoops! So these ones are a little large for this container. I'm gonna try as best as we can to... We have a, can you hand me a bar spoon? I'm gonna try to crack it over top. Working on the skills. Or... This one or the smaller one? That's a good one. It's about the leverage, I say, attempting to get as much leverage as possible. To just kinda... Crack. Oh, I completely missed it. Go ahead. Yeah, you just go for it, pal. Yep, you just, you just... Eh. There we go, a little bit of, a little bit of... Most of the ice has found its way to the bar so far. After you. And then, hopefully, only a couple more. Okay, it's in there. Yeah, I was just I was gonna say, just drop the sucker in. We tried. What's important is that we tried. Mr. Hopper Trainer, yes? Yes, okay. Indeed. And I think with this one, because we got the whole egg in there, we're gonna double strain it into the cook glass. In the meantime, if you don't mind me reaching across, I will set up the cocktail angle so we can get a beautiful, beautiful view of everything. There we go. I'm getting better at this. Absolutely. Practice, or so they say. Practice sure, indeed. Wednesday is my day off. Wednesday is our lovely day. It's cocktails on Wednesday. Because because it's Wednesday, my dude, you know? Just tell me when. Oh, whenever you think it's all good. Once you get the pressure all nice and built up in there, it shouldn't want to open at all. So you can just like completely go all ham on it. There we go. Luckily for this guy, we don't need to worry too much about, I don't know, uh, social standard telling us that we have to shake it for 20 minutes. Okay. Oh, now that is fizzy. Okay, so now we got a double strain it over top. I think we can take advantage of the strain top on this guy. And then we can use... Oh, right. We can use one of the strainers that are in the bin on your right-hand side. They've got the little fishnet to them. Yeah, that one. That'll work perfectly. Okay. Indeed. I'm doing this left-handed. Let's hope I don't come to regret it. Ooh. That also has a very yellow color to it. Nice. I don't know if we'll have room for champagne. Interestingly enough, so it specifically says to put it in a champagne saucer, rimming it halfway, pouring everything over top into an empty shaker, shake well to emulsify, put it back in the other one, top with champagne to make a foamy head right to the rim of the glass. Which it kind of seems like it's already up there. I guess the point is that it's just supposed to be that splash. Mm hmm So now, we'll grab some of our champagne, which we've got completely, conveniently placed right next to the microphone. And we'll see where we get with things. Um, Alright, world. Ooh, would you like to toss that in the bucket? Sure. Bucket! Nice! Just chuck it in. Let's see if I can get this champagne bottle open without making a mess. Alright. And this champagne is coming from De Perrier. De Perrier Brut. AKA a little bit of dry. Oh! It wants it. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Ah! ah! Right next to the microphone! Please. Oh my god. Ah! Jeez, it scared me. <laughs> it's got a nice bubble to it. Very good! And now we will completely fill it up to the rest of the rim of the glass. How that's gonna fare for us, I don't even know. Come on now. There we go. A little bit. Very foamy. Very bubbly. All... Wow. All the way to the rim. My goodness. That is pretty. That is a very, I love the way that looks. I don't even think it's dripping down at all. It was perfect. Wow. I'm, I'm very tempted ooh, to ooh, like ooh. chance fate and like turn it. I gotta take a. Oh yeah, the photo. The obligatory photo, cause the bot's not working. There we go. I'm getting like some really weird glare over here. It doesn't wanna, wow. It seems that my phone app keeps on crashing. That's really funny. That is so weird. Maybe? I, my lens may need cleaning. I think you may need cleaning. There we go. 
I don't normally struggle with the technological aspects of things. It's totally new. Ah! Ah! The beauty of this is the cocktail blog afterwards is gonna look beautiful. But I think that's all the pictures I need for there. The obligatory Instagram picture, you know, just what we do. So now, should we go back to the other angle and give it a give it a smell if we can even try it? Well, I'm definitely Oh, I was gonna say I'm getting a grapefruit smell, but then I remember, oh yeah, I'm oh. sitting right on top of the grapefruit. Indeed, indeed. In front of the grapefruit, I meant not on. I'm not sitting on the produce. So long as the produce is not making anything weird or uncomfortable, either we're going into the produce or the produce is going within us, I think we're gonna we're gonna be okay. Although technically, there's some juice of the produce that is inside of the cocktail itself, and I think you know what that you know. I don't think Remind fruit's Remind me gonna... we need to refrigerate this to some capacity later. Indeed. I try to preserve as much of our citrus as possible. They're, they're special. They're special indeed. Okie doke. I'm gonna take this in very carefully. We should round. Mm. The beautiful little boom arm does all the work. Okie doke. I gotta... Carefully. Carefully bring this up. Oh my goodness. I am trying as hard as possible not to spill this. This seems like a party game. It is a party game. The party stream. That's where we got party heads. Kind of smells exactly like the bosom caresser. And I think it's that cream egg smell in there. Or whatever I'm getting from it. I think it might also be coming from, there's a bit of like a, like a, like a fruitiness there from, I'm guessing the champagne, because we did just kind of pour it up on top. I, I mean, I am smelling like sugar and egg, but mm -hmm. like, it's not as uh, heavy on like bourbon as the other one was on brandy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The and it's interesting to think too, like, we did just pour champagne on top of it. I don't know if the champagne layered at all with any, with the other bits of the cocktail that were like shaken up the first time. I'm guessing because the shaken parts are more bubbly, probably more with air in it, that the champagne maybe sank to the bottom or maybe it's sitting up on top. There's really no way to know. And even at that other angle that we had previously, I don't think we could see any layers there. I, I still don't see any layers. So wherever that champagne is, poof. Okie doke. Let's see what it tastes like. Do you dare? What kind of stream would this be if I didn't? There we go. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Just a, just a little bit. That is actually really good. It looks like it's got a very nice cream up on top of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, how's it going, Rich? I think it's standard to express a garnish over most egg drinks to cover the egg smell. It's honestly not too bad, all things considered. And if the garnish was called, then we will add the garnishes appropriately. This one was specifically garnished with the hot sugar around the rim. Actually, how did that add to the flavor of the drink? Was there a little bit of a spiciness there? It was actually mostly a sweetness. Ooh. Not getting too much of the Let me give this a try. Because the hot sugar on the side is only a little bit of cayenne and some cocoa powder. Okay, I did get a tiny bit of cocoa powder. Ooh. Ooh. There is something different with that. And I don't exactly know what it is. I'm trying to piece out. So this this cocktail, the May West Royal Diamond Fizz, is made with some goji infused bourbon, two ounces of that. We also have a, a half an ounce of pomegranate liqueur. In this case, it's a tequila-based one. A one ounce or 30 ounce, 30 milliliters of fresh grapefruit juice, an entire egg, root champagne up on top. And you're supposed to also garnish this with a couple of goji berries, but we don't have any goji berries. Okay. So we instead have the rim around the, the edge instead. I feel like the... Uh... The grapefruit juice like thins out some of the foam on mm. the uh, on the egg, mm -hmm. and then you get some of the savory from the goji powder. Yeah, there must be there because there is like a savory component, and the only thing that I can think of is either something coming from that bourbon that we used, which in this case was a four roses with goji powder infused. But to be honest, I've never actually had a goji berry itself. I tried a little bit of the goji berry powder, and it's like, it's is it worth a dry. try? Yeah, I'd say it's worth a try. If you want to give it a give it a shot to see if we're getting any flavor in there, go for it. Oh, you know, it's almost like it's cereally. 
I almost feel like yeah. I've had, like, like you ever had like special K cereal or like raisin bran? And then it like sits in the bowl too. Yeah, long. yeah. It kind of tastes. Whoa. It kind of tastes like raisin bran crunch, but the crunch part of the raisin bran, not the raisin part of the raisin bran. I was not so I expecting like, that from a berry. Right. And it's interesting to think when I think about savoriness. I can honestly consider that as a little bit savory because I like Raisin Bran Crunch specifically because it tastes unlike any other cereals, and I guess it's because of that brand. That's kind of that, that's really good. It's it's complex. Sorry, just tell me one. No, you're totally you're totally good. I actually kind of want to take another sip of it as well. Oh, yeah. We can move it back here because I I like this one. This is like pleasant in a way that I've never experienced before. Yeah, I was just putting this one aside before because like, I know you were saying you wanted to try it when it got closer to room temperature. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh, oh allow allow me to uh, get something. We we got some uh, essence to camera on. We got some there. essence. We had some essence in the glass. Don't worry about the essence. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful essence. Now, as I was saying before I uh, lost my mind. <laughs> before I almost sent back, sent it back to the chef. Take this away from me. Um, I thought we were wanting to try this at like room temperature, mm -hmm. see if it changes anything. I was almost hoping you wouldn't bring it up because I was scared of it. Because warm eggs. I have my, tra my, my trauma from that experience in Maryland. What do you think of it now? Would you want to get to me if I say I, I like it like 5% better now? Better? Oh. Oh. And this was the bosom caresser from earlier. Correct. The flip. I don't know. The... It's sweeter now. Yeah. It's more It's more subdued now. Mature. That, it's had time to mature. It has had time to mature. Who knew if you leave eggs, they mature. And perhaps get more tasty. I feel like... What went into that again? It was they—they they had some grenadine in there. There was the, there was the um, brandy, the brandy, and then we had the egg yolk in there. We had an ounce of something else. Oh, we had the uh, they had the curacao, the orange liqueur in there. Mm -hmm. I feel like the sweetness from the orange liqueur is really shining through a lot more, but also the brandy as well because the brandy I'm getting like fruitiness to it. Another note that I had about the May West Royal Diamond Fizz is that honestly, it tastes almost like peanut butter and jelly. Specifically the peanut butter and I think I think the where that's coming from is it might actually be The champagne that we used Because like I don't recognize that flavor at all and I think it might have actually come from the champagne itself And I'm very curious to see if That's true because I don't I've never had this particular brand before. I'm getting more of the jelly mm -hmm. I like that, the Champagne <laughs> yeah, but I think that might be coming from the maybe that's the goji berry almost Because that could be I can see that as being kind of jelly like this isn't going to last through stream, is it? No, this is, <laughs> this is really good. And it's like, it's different too. Like I would never, like the reason why I was so excited about it because I've never had goji berry before. I didn't think that infusing the bourbon with it was going to make that much of a difference, but evidently it totally did, which is kind of cool, all things considered. That's the beautiful thing about cocktails. It makes a bunch of things together and it tastes like something else. This like legitimately feels like it's almost like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in a glass, but a lot more on the... It's kind of like like the full thing, and I include the the bread, the peanut butter, and the jelly in that all at the same time. Um, but it's not as like intense as like a like a something using like peanut butter whiskey would be. It almost tastes like there could be peanut butter whiskey in here. That's really cool. Ooh, that's a really good one. That one came, like came out of nowhere. Personally, I found that all things considered, egg drinks like drinks that have like egg yolk in them specifically are not. I don't know. I feel like it's a it's a very off-putting thought, but usually it doesn't. It's not that bad. I found that they're usually very very good. Wait, are Let's do we a little still... bit of cleanup back here. Sorry, are we still following our pattern? I don't know. I don't even know if this one is considered. Well, technically this one is considered a fizz. So we could do a flip next. But this one had an egg yolk in it as well. So I don't even know. I leave it up to you, my dear guest star, to see what we do next. Where do our cocktail adventures take us next? Okay, so what we have left is the Dylan Collins, the Golden Flip, the Golden... Go oh, I, I heard a reaction to the Collins. Indeed, I did hear about the Collins. You were kind of hopping up the, the, the D Collins earlier. Yeah, I... Uh, <laughs> 
last week I had found uh, limoncello. Limoncello? Yeah, 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 yeah. The limoncello. Okay, so we're gonna need that. We're gonna need Grey Goose Lesotron Vodka. Do you have that? Well, I have that citrus liqueur that I think we're just gonna use again. It's supposed to be a, a lemon, I believe, liqueur. So, which look at the limoncello. I don't know if it'll matter too much. Well, you we need an ounce of lemon juice itself. We've got some lemons. Half an egg white, and then a large orange peel. We've got some egg whites still left over from the first cocktail. I think that might be the next one, right? Yeah, and for mm -hmm. we we could make uh, two separate ones. Oh, true, true, true. So we would just have to double the uh, the amount. It's true. We'll do that. We'll do a Dylan Collins right up next. I saw that Dark Techie has just popped in the chat over there. Hi, man. Hi, Dark. How you doing? Hey. All right. Uh, I'm putting away my other ingredients and stuff. I've cleaned out another shaker for us. I think we'll probably use the big one this time before we're going to double up the proportions. Okay. Um, thick one. Mm-hmm. So Thank you. Where, where do we put this that it's within access, but not like in the way of us making stuff? Well, you pop it on over here. We'll give it a little bit of spotlight over there. I'm doing all right. How about you, says Dark Friend? We've got, we got friends. We've got cocktails. We've got. It's beautiful. We're doing, we're doing all right. Work's been hectic, so this is a nice break from the week, of course. You says, if anyone is lurking, you guys really should follow. If not, you're missing out. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sirs. We do this thing every single Wednesday. It's good stuff. So we need the decons. So I'm going to put up on our board over here the Jazz Collins. Preach. Indeed. Preach it. This stuff is fun. I mean, evidently, from what I've been told, I mean, I'm a little biased or whatever, but apparently this show is so fun that people actually travel to make a guest star. Could you believe that? I can't even believe that. I'm still reeling over it. If I, it hasn't been obvious already, it's super have fun to have people on stream. And this is Ima Ch this is not Ima Chow's first rodeo on this stream as well. And so the fact that she's come back for another round is totally, totally honestly thinking it's an absolute honor. And it like got me so excited. I've been looking forward to this for like a month now. That's why yeah, now all we need is for Jasper to make an individual appearance. Mm hmm Because Lycos and I have. It's Lycos true. Lycos came true. back for Mocktail. It's I true. I came back for this. You and, might have... And Imi Chow, because of her appearance, has gotten the opportunity to put a second signature inside of the official bar with an X guest book. Why don't we call it book with an X? I mean, it could be a book. Oh, it's <laughs> silent. I catch myself sometimes. We have fun here. Indeed, we do. So the next, what was the next cocktail? Dylan, D. Collins. Dylan Collins. Dylan Collins. Dylan Collins includes exactly the ingredients that Amy Chow just went over before. It's got that citron vodka, which I believe, I'm gonna double check and see what they, whether that is um, either lemon or lime. The citron vodka, I definitely misspelled Why that. Why should it be orange? But lecithin vodka, no. Oh, I totally misspelled that. Le. Le lecithin. Isn't that the thing in like, like a soy. chocolate milk? Like soy lecithin. Grey goose lecithin. Oh, grey goose. Did you call for grey goose? I'm not spending that much money on vodka. No way. But the it's worst lemon. part is, is if he asked, I might have. Oh my goodness. The contributions they've Don't made to this mom. are great. Don't tell mom. Don't tell my mother either. <laughs> mom, if you're out there listening. Uh, so we need the we need something that's lemon related. We've got the lemoncello. I'll pull up from down here. I don't actually think that I have anything back here that is specifically lemon flavored. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna defer back to the citron liqueur, which is more orange zest flavor to make up for that. The lemoncello would actually be the first thing that I've ever had lemon flavored on the stream. And it's actually completely new. It's never been opened. So we actually get this opportunity to try oh. Lemoncella Sophia's. 100%. Now we bring out the thing. Now we bring out the cordial glasses. It, it looks like it would hold like a soft boiled egg. Oh my gosh. It, yeah, you're right. It reminds like the like put the little Fabergé egg up on top or like the soft boiled one where you like. I saw that like there was a game that I played when I was younger called Cooking Mama. And one of the <gasps> things was like you would take like the soft boiled egg or the hard boiled egg and you'd like crack the egg on the outside as it was being held in the glass. I like had that image in my brain of it. 
But it's been so long since I played it. I was actually like, I had that in my head when we were first cracking the egg. Right? Like, oh don't my God. worry, Mama, fix it. Dude, oh my God, that was the best part about it. It's like, you could. Cooking Mama doesn't want to discourage you. She's not going to say, Bro, you fucked up. I'm going to do it for you. It's like, Don't worry. You did fine. I'll fix it for you. <laughs> Meanwhile, her eyes are like flaming. She's literally and she's on trying, fire. She's trying not to. To hold back the absolute fury of like, I can't believe you done screwed up in my kitchen. Mothers everywhere. Mothers, mothers everywhere. Oh my gosh. Thank you, and I am sorry. So we need our citron vodka, we got our limoncello, we need some fresh lemon juice. Lemon. Half an egg white, and a large orange peel. We got an orange over here that we can peel when called upon. And we need half of the egg white. But we're gonna do this, we're gonna make two of these in the same container, so we'll do, we'll double all these proportions. And we will go through them, we will share those proportions as we go along through them. I almost caught, cut it the wrong half. Oh my goodness. There's no wrong way to cut a lemon. Unless, unless, <laughs> you, unless you know otherwise. Now you know how I feel trying to rein in the friend group. Love you, Jasper. Plan a wine cocktail stream. Oh, I've always wanted to play around with wine. Yeah, we're always driving Jasper up the wall. So, our lemoncello. Freshly opened bottle. Where is the thing? Let me give this an open. What are you looking for? Oh, the squeezer? Squeezer! The little yellow things! Please? Yeah. Either one of them will work. I have a favorite. Okay, um, so how much do we need? So it says that we're gonna use a full ounce of fresh lemon juice, but I think we can probably just juice the whole lemon into the shaker itself, and I think we'll be all right. Yes. Oh yeah, because yeah. our each side will give probably about. I think the entire lemon itself is going to get a bit over an ounce. So I think if we do a little bit of estimation there, I think we'll be all right. In the meantime, I'll grab a couple of cubes for the actual shaker. It's the other side of the shaker, and I'll pop open this limoncello and we can give it a taste. Yeah, I was about to say, is that you or me? Oh, that was my phone doing a buzz. One big cube, couple of little cubes. Beautiful, beautiful. Cubes. Is mine still on? Yes, yes, indeed. Oh and, wow! And charge it. Could you uh, press the button? Sure. Button. The treasure chest button. Treasure chest button. Treasure. Oh yes, of course. <gasps> Two point nine thousand properly plaid party heads. Incredible. Well, I mean, after we uh, saved up for the uh, the the oh the my gosh stream, for the smut stream, I didn't have anywhere oh. else to put in until we got to five ten thousand. I <laughs> I'm thinking that the next community goal is like an improv day or something. I've been I've been joking around with a couple of other friends in the community of being like, it'd be just so fun to have the just completely clear out the living room, put the camera on it, put chat on television, and just do like collective community improv because I'm a huge fan of that stuff, and it's. It gets wild. Bucket, please. Bucket. 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 Get in the bucket. In the in the background, I'm gonna just look at this beautifully huge lemoncello. It smells like lemon pledge. Mm. I I, I, I told you with the the, the cleaning it's product. The cleaning products. product. That's the thing with the citrus and stuff. Really, this is actually just an excuse for us to squeeze some lemon juice and just, like, clean the bar with lemon juice and my floor and rip up more of the varnish. It looks terrible. Yeah, we, we probably shouldn't be clean with lemon chili. We'll make things hella sticky and not in a fun way. Whoa. Whoa to the lemon cello or whoa to whoa me to going lemon... too far? Oh, no, you're doing an excellent job over here. I was woed and have taken it back by the lemon cello. I don't think I've ever had lemon cello sipped straight before and it's like you took like lemonade the sweetness of lemonade and instead of like the lemon juice as being like the main lemon component it's like lemon zest it tastes the way that lemon pledge smells and it's as sweet as like it tastes like sweet as cane sugar it legitimately tastes like a lemon zest lemonade it's different it's like you put like a bunch of lemon heads in your mouth and then spit mm. them out before you got to the good part. Yeah, there's not much of yeah. There's like there's a distinct lack of sourness with the limoncello, which I'm okay with because I'm I'm actually not a big fan of sour flavors. Sour just like does not do it for me. Hmm. Nice. That's the case. I know people you will get along just fine with. Oh, with the lack of the sours. Yep. Ah. I recently learned a couple of people I know can't do sour. 
Like, which is nothing wrong with that to each their own. I, I mean, I mean, if I can get defensive, it's not like I can't do the sour. I'm just, just like we prefer not to. Exactly. Well, he preferred not to. I, mean, I don't. I'm not a sour kind of gal. Just not my my jam. I like bitter things. If I had to pick a flavor that's not super common to be liked, bitter. I like bitter things. I mean, not too bitter, but bitter, bitter. Fan yeah. Of that. Indeed. Have you tried this kind of limoncello before? Actually, have you tried limoncello at all? Um, no. Ooh. I don't think I've even had a cocktail before. Hmm. I know, like, to be honest, like, I, I haven't had limoncello in my collection, and that's because, like, I don't know too many limoncello cocktails specifically, but in this oh, case, the Dylan Collins is a, goes for it. So we also, we, we have our lemon juice in there. We need to add our limoncello, our lemon vodka, or... Well, I mean, it's specifically uh, asked for vodka, so should we? Should we? We could that? just, yeah, you know, what? we could just go without without the extra lemony component of the vodka itself. We got Tito's, and if it needs more lemon, we, we got some, more lemon. Got more lemon. I like that. There's always room for I creative just, interpretation. I didn't know if the type of spirit made a difference. Yeah, well, so I guess that you actually do bring up a really good point there. Because vodka itself, aside from the flavor that you wind up adding to it, is in general a very neutral spirit. Meanwhile, the citrus liqueur that I pulled out is actually tequila-based. So it will impart a bit of tequila agave, specifically Blue Weber, into the cocktail itself. Which, how that actually changes it, nobody knows until we try. But... It's certainly not as neutral as vodka would be. So where's the... <laughs> Sorry about that. Salud. Thank you. Alright. <laughs> Salud. Um... <laughs> oh my god. Comes in three. Salud. Thank you. What else are we looking for? Oh, we need a jigger! Your mind? Where did I put it? I got it. Yeah, I was... That's what I was going to ask about. That's the one. Okay. So... Okay, okay. So... So the cocktail recipe calls for, if you're making Four it in single four. parts... Two ounces of the vodka, in this case a lemon citron if you've got it, and two ounces of the limoncello, about 59 milliliters each. We're doubling things up because we're make, gonna make one for each of us, so we're gonna put four ounces in total, or just about 117 or so. Um, and we added a single ounce of lemon juice, just about two ounces. We're, we put a whole lemon in there. It's gonna be good. And then we put, oh, we need to add the egg white in there. We'll add that after we add our other constituent ingredients in there. We're gonna shake this guy. Actually, does it say on it whether dry shake or wet shake? It doesn't say specifically whether we have to dry shake it first, but if we're just putting the egg white in there, I feel like we have to dry shake it first. I just get that. I feel I feel that it must be. And each of them gets garnished with a, with a with an orange peel. As Rich pointed out before, if you're gonna make an egg drink, you may be inclined to mask that eggy smell with something completely different. In this case, it's an orange. In the one case, it was hot sugar. And in the first case, that didn't call for... The bosom caresser doesn't call for a garnish. I feel like the action in and of itself is garnishing enough, I suppose. Also, my nose is so itchy. Yeah, I was about to say, are you all right? I have no idea what's going on, but I feel like I need to sneeze again. We're gonna be okay. All right. Is that all of our liquid components? Uh... Well, I mean, we lost a little bit. Yeah. We lost a little bit to the bar itself. All good. And the bar gets a little thirsty sometimes, too. The yeah. bucket's perpetually hungry and thirsty, but we have to keep that beast in check. The bar, though. It eats whole lemons. We spoil her. Indeed. Like, like <laughs> the entire lemon itself. Okay, so now we just need to add the egg white. And luckily, from earlier, we got this egg white that we've been keeping on the side. I would consider that to be one whole egg white. I say so. I'll take it. So we've got our vodka, our limoncello, our lemon juice, and our egg whites in there. So all we need to do is give that a shake. Our ice has come to temperature, so I'm going to dump out any water that's formed, which is essentially none in these containers, which is awesome. Ooh. And we'll carefully... Oh, actually, I just remembered. We're dry shaking first. So actually, here, we do this first, as I very precariously put the ice on. I forgot about it. I almost forgot. This can only end well. So. Yes. There we go. Now we just need to give that a dry shake, trying as best as we possibly can to not make a mess. But if we do, that's just all a part of the fun. Okay, it looks like we've got a decent seal. Awesome. Well, so far you're doing great there. Every, almost every time that I've tried to do a dry shake, I get some little dribble along the side of it because, like, I just, like, I'm not aggressive enough on, like, trying to keep the seal uh, sealed there. 
I'm always a little aggressive, too gentle. Passive, aggressive, or not. Whatever. Not like I care. Are you like really shaking there? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. And after you've dry shaken your cocktail with the egg white into it, we're, it's emulsified the egg white in there to make it a little more foamy. And then we just go absolutely wild by adding some uh, to ice to it. Okay. I swear I'm getting better at this. Yeah. I made a mess, but it's okay. The bar likes it, or so we think it does. It's gonna take it, it's gonna take it. There we go. So now that this thing has been completely sealed, you don't even have to be careful about it anymore. I say, hopefully not precariously. It definitely sounds sizzy. Okay, so this is going to make five to six ounces, so enough for two shot glasses. Uh, do we stack shots down here? I, I think I see them. I like to think that these two are actually gonna go into little coupe glasses, so I'm gonna scooch behind you real quick and grab. How much does a coupe hold? Oh, oh. Three, three ish ounces, I think? Three or four ish ounces? I don't know why, but I I mistook coop for cordial. Oh, oh. This is coop. why I'm not an official bartender. Oh, don't worry, I'm not licensed many, either. many, many things. <laughs> I'm not licensed. I'm not an official bartender, at least right. But if you bartend enough, you gain, you gain the certification by experience, I guess. Although the law may have something to say about that, all things considered. So now what we'll do is we're gonna double strain that. So we'll take the one Hawthorne strainer and we're gonna grab the other remaining mesh strainer over there and we'll pour it into both of these glasses. And we'll see how that looks from the cocktail angle. Okay, so it was in the, it was in the big one. Mm -hmm. Yep, right in this one here. I'm getting, okay. I totally know what I'm doing. Let me control F real quick. If we can get a nice little Control F, I said. That's wrong. There we go. Okay. Well, I mean, five technically begins with F. There we go. Two little Let's coupe hit. glasses. All right. I leave it up to you, Miss Bartendress. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. And we'll keep everything that's caught in the mesh strainer inside of there because we don't want it too, too eggy. It kind of helps in facilitating two, the foam that's appearing three, up on top. Four, five, six. There we go. Yep. Definitely nice. Not even yet. It's definitely catching something. We can take a little bit of that mucus and put it into the bucket. It just doesn't want to escape. At you. Ugh. Maybe I should have just sneezed into the bucket. Nobody's gonna drink from the One, bucket jungle two, juice. Three. That'd be nasty. Yeah. Wow. Very nicely proportioned. So and there's no two, more. The top of that Hawthorne strainer there actually has a little divot in it that if, if you know what you're doing, which I don't, you can pour into two separate containers at the same time. However, in this case, you would need two strainers. But I guess if you were able to pull that off, that's even more a testament to the skill of the bartenders at play. Had you. Nice. Oh, goodness. This bucket smells very lemony. Wow! Funny enough, I think it smells a little better than the bar. Indeed. I have like a little oh bit of my goodness. fledge or whatever. I, I put like, I don't even know what it is that I clean this bar with, but it also kind of smells like lemon. Wow, we totally estimated on that lemon squeezing there, and I think it worked out pretty much perfectly. There we go. I'm like this close to single straining it. Patience is the key. Supposedly it makes a better cocktail. I don't know. I don't know. We could try it many different ways, but it'd be very distracting. And it would take forever. And we'd never get to the Ramos Gin Fizz. All right, what do you think? It looks pretty good. Yeah. I love the color variation on this one too. Why? It, lo it looks... Uh, I had a coherent thought. Okay, um, looks like those uh, laminata sores that I sometimes see. Oh, it's like San Pellegrino. Yeah. San Pellegrino Limonata. It's Italian. That's why I put my fingers up like that. It just likes to do funny things sometimes. Shall I take the... There's still a tiny bit of drink in it, so if you're, hmm. like, hangering for extras... Well, what I'll do is I'll put it on the side. I'll clean up the strainer. The strainer definitely needs to be a little bit cool. 
Okay. But I'll put it on the side, and if you want to get any more of it, we can do it that way. Fun noises. It's the noise of a very happy bucket. And we like the bucket. It's an honor for the bucket. Just put it in the bucket. And let's flip this off to the side. Um, are we, uh... No, we're good here. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah, we're totally good. Okay. Don't you worry. So what we have here is our Dylan Collins. Just really interesting, because I feel like I knew somebody named Dylan Collins in my life. Come to think of it. Or Dylan's is Collins. Dylan Collins. When I think of a Collins, I think of a drink that usually uses like, I think, I think it's like soda water and lime juice and maybe some gin and stuff in there. Cause I think that's how you make, I think that's how you make like a Tom Collins. But when I think of a Dylan Collins, I'm like, I guess technically speaking, the Dylan in this case might be Limoncello. Who that Dylan may be is beyond the scope of the episode. However, apparently whoever Dylan was, is a big fan of Limoncello. And that's why his Collins Dylan's the cousin of Tom that's not allowed to play with him at family reunions. Aww. Wait, Dylan's the one who's not allowed, or Tom's the one who's not allowed? Yes. Yes. Neither. They're not allowed to play with each other. Anyone but them. Sorry, that was a really bad sound to make into the microphone. It was kind of spilling. Oh, that... Oh. Yeah. Oh. That has a wonderful lemon zest to it. Oh, no, we forgot the orange. I just remembered as well. I was like, wait a minute. We need the orange on there. So allow me to take a moment to take this beautiful orange orange and just like, you know, just like, you know. I feel like we're sharing one brain cell and it's like misfiring. It happens. I mean, at least one of us has alcohol in us right now. Lemon. Le <laughs> it's not a lemon. <laughs> orange. There we go. I'll put, put a little bit of it in the side of the glass. It's beautiful. Garnish that with an orange peel. I have to take another. Oh, would you like? There you go. I'm going to be pretentious about it. Indeed, just... indeed. Just give it a nice little, you know, you, you do the orange peel however you feel. It's all about the way that you feel when you're doing the orange peel. You're going to wipe a little bit around the side there. Give it a nice little, like... It smells really good, actually. Mm. It smells like morning. Yeah, it just smells like oranges in the morning. Just a little... It's... it's fine. It's a... it's a very simple Dylan's Collins, all things considered. Shall we go for round two, dear Michelle? Indeed. Sal Salud. That actually did add another angle to that, which I'm very appreciative of. Mm -hmm. So it's dry. It has a dryness to it that I honestly wasn't expecting too much. It's very much... Based off of the way that the limoncello tastes, it's very limoncello-y. Like, like, it basically tastes almost exactly like the limoncello with a little less on the sweet side because I think we diluted it a little bit, the sweetness I mean, with the vodka in there. And the egg white in this case- feels like vodka. Oh, for sure. I think the dryness that I'm getting is probably coming from the egg white. And I don't know if that's like, um, I don't know what it is about the egg, the egg white that makes things a little more dry. Sometimes that works out a little bit more, sometimes a little else. I think in the land of egg white cocktails, the New York Sour, which has red wine in it, I think, oh, you're good. I think that it, the, the dryness of the egg white is very, very good in the New York Sour because the red wine itself will usually have like a dryness to it. And it just kind of complements it because it's not like in addition to whatever you put inside of it. Because the limoncello itself was not very dry. The vodka, at least in my experience with Tito's, also not very dry. So I think the egg white is definitely doing it there. But it could have also been the entire... Uh, amount of lemon juice that we put in there possible too very pleasant very lemony what are your thoughts I, uh, I i've seen vodka lemonade on a lot of menus and i feel like i i feel like that's what it would like taste like yeah I can totally it's understand like, that. It's like it's like lemonade mm -hmm. with like less of the sugar bite and more of the booze bite. Yeah, I agree with that. And like the limoncello itself just kind of tasted like a very very sweet lemonade. So in that regard, it it is very vodka plus lemonadey. Which like I know a lot of people who are like there's a good number of people in my life who when I ask about spirits and stuff they're like oh limoncello limoncello is my jam. 
So like, like straight up or like mixed in the stuff? Like if they had to pick a favorite spirit, it would be Limoncello. One person in particular in my life who I didn't sniffle because like they're gone or anything. I just still have that. I have that. I think it's all the sourness that's getting to my body. That's making me sniffle a lot. She's wonderful and she loves Limoncello. Although I've never actually shared the Limoncello with her. That's a good well, one. Well, now you can. Next now I can over. because I've got some Limoncello here now. Our lemon liqueur, and now I'm reading the back of the bottle, from Sophia. Our lemon liqueur is an infusion in alcohol from the best Italian lemon skins. The bouquet is fine and elegant with well-pronounced fruit taste, well-structured, pleasant, and harmonious. That feels just as pretentious as these beautiful limoncello oh. drinks that we've had. Oops. Indeed. Are you good? Would you like me to take that off your hands? Yeah, no problem. Ooh, it's kind I'm, of... I'm sorry, I, I forgot that was like a bar rag. I, I... You're totally good. Oh, and we've got plenty of other bar rags too. If if depending on how depending on how you are at the bar, because it's to be a comfortable experience. Maybe you're a leaner. Maybe you're like a the kind that like picks the closest wall and just like <sighs> bourbon on the rocks, please. It's however you feel. And and pers <laughs> personally, I'm a leaner on the rocks. <laughs> I'm supposed- I need to be a stand-up straighter, because if not, Anna posture checks me, and those can be painful experiences. We tried to develop a repertoire specifically for her to let me know that I'm not standing up straight, and usually it's a little gesture like... Like... Why is it only a half hour later I'm finally uh, figuring out what Jasper meant by that one comment? Plan a wine cocktail stream and I will. Oh yeah, because we were saying that uh, Jasper needs a, a, a oh, solo. Oh yeah, cameo. oh yeah, dude. Jasper's gonna come up here and pop on a so as a solo guest. Anybody out there could be a guest. Are you a person who likes alcohol and is an enthusiast of at least one particular type, theme, or otherwise abstract concept? Let me know. My DMs are always open, and the bo the bar is open for visitors. That's why we have a guest book. In any case, so what we just covered was the Dylan Collins, and the Dylan Collins is made with two ounces or about 59 milliliters of a vodka. It could be a lemon vodka or just a regular vodka like we use. Two ounces or 59 milliliters of limoncello. You can use whichever kind of limoncello you want. We got Sophia's over here, evidently. We have a full ounce of lemon juice in there, or about 30 milliliters of that, and half an egg white. You shake that all up, dry shake first, wet shake second, then you garnish it with an orange peel. And that's how you have and that's the way the Dylan likes it, apparently. There are many ways to Collins. This is the way Dylan would do it. Dylan's not allowed at the party anymore. Neither is Tom. There's some exposition there that you might have missed, but it's it's fine. It's fine. It's gonna be alright. Alright. So I think though, now that we've done a let's see, that was just a fizz, technically speaking. Or Dylan's Collins. It's a fizz in this case, could have the had the uh the egg white in there. I think we're due to go for a um, a flip next, right? So we have the golden flip. We have the Porto flip. Um, uh, that's about it in terms of overt flips. Golden flip and Porto flip. So actually, what I'm really curious about is the two flips that we've done so far, which was the bosom caresser and the... Oh my god, what do you call it? What was it called? May West Royal Diamond. Nope, that's that's wrong. Yes, it was the May West Royal Diamond Fizz. Technically a flip, but also kind of a fizz. It's a, you know, eggs are in there. Both of them have a very yellow color to it. So I'm actually kind of curious to see how the Porto Flip tastes and how it looks as well, because according to the picture that we have for reference, the Porto Flip, which as you may have guessed, uses port wine in there, looks very, very red. And the lighting job that they did on that is just, hmm. Fine. Immaculate. Immaculate indeed. The Porto Flip is made with, you guessed it, port wine, brandy, and an egg yolk. That's why it's a flip in this case. So, that's what we'll do. We will prepare for cocktail number... One, two, three, four. four. Number four. Out of curiosity, would you like to finish the little bit of the uh, limoncello that's in there? With all due respect, I would not. Oh, all good. I will take that happily. I've got, I'm actually kind of, the thing that I like most about the limoncello is like, I like lemon flavor, but I don't like the sourness of lemon juice. So that is actually fills a little bit of a niche that I've been looking for, which is, which is wonderful. Oh, the peel actually like fell in, fell in. Nice. How does your, actually yours I'm interested because you did a, oh my goodness. 
Anna's coming up from the downstairs dungeon to try limoncello because I think she's heard the way we described it and is intrigued. No, I just tried limoncello because I decided to get distracted and turned on your stream for five seconds. There goes Anna, always going on the offensive over there. We have like a... Come hither, love. Like a cordial left. Indeed. Here, there's a little bit of limoncello. Does it taste bad? No, it actually tastes kind of like cane sugar sweet lemonade. Like it's pleasant, it's just not my thing. Oh, you've got a funny face on. Thoughts? Concerns? So, you know complaints? Lemon Pledge? Yes. <laughs> Like lemon pledge with vindication. It's, yep, yep. It's, it's the lemon pledge. pledge. Yeah, yeah. It's cleaning product. It basically tastes like that. If you've ever oh, wanted, to, if you've ever wanted to drink cleaning product, but don't want to get like overtly poisoned, Sophia's lemon cello. Now yours for only how much does this cost? Like sixteen bucks for like twenty dollars. We have to work on a profit here. <laughs> you can't just sell things. I'm not being sponsored. I have to say that legally. Uh, there, it's available at like most uh, liquor stores near you. It's yellow, and you can put it upside down, but not for long. Wait, can we find that in it's Pennsylvania like, or just New Jersey? It's here now. Well, I know for yeah. sure it's in New Jersey. I haven't actually checked the Pennsylvania ones yet. Yet. Yeah, Pennsylvania is a little weird. Pennsylvania liquor laws are like, eh, you want you want to have a cocktail? You want to you want to get thingy in your? You have to. I mean, I order. saw like organic spirit place on the way. Apparently, there's a non-alcoholic spirit place somewhere in the city, which at least one person in my life has been being like, hey, have you considered this? And I was like, yeah. I don't know if I want to continue yeah. drinking this. You it don't have burns. Have it. Can I have it? Please take them. Please don't get you. Goodbye! Oh, look! Eggs! Don't step on the eggs, please. She'll be walking on eggshells if she does. What's wrong with my demonic eggs? Anna, I can't have you break another egg. Well, I mean, we'll, I we'll no, actually- no, Not the red one! No, specifically not the red one! We're, we're specifically using the demonic egg from hell mm -hmm. in this stream. Which one is that one? The red one! The red one! Oh, why is that one demonic? Because it's red! Not the one that has stickers all over it? I don't want sticker residue in the cocktail. Oh, that's a good point. That's a terrible idea! Not the one that has this creepy face looking- <laughs> We'll use that next. Wait, that can I like, can I please? That one's like demon spawn. <laughs> it's got eyeball stickers on it. He looks like he's having. He looks like he's having fun. This guy over here, a little bit farther down. There we go. That guy's staring straight into our soul. That's what happens at Easter at the uh, Calrosi household. Ooh. Ugh, stares in your soul. So we have the Porto flip for this one. Apparently, the, we're using the demonic one on this one, right? Eh, I wouldn't say demonic. It's more derpy. Yeah, it's derpy. It's like it's like cute in its own special way. D derpy in an affectionate way, yes. Derpy, derpy in an infatuable way, indeed. So the Porto flip was rather simple to explain. It's got some brandy in it. It's got some port in it, and it's got egg in it. It's actually, it's a very, very, very simple cocktail, all things considered. And I'm, my guess is that it is going to be. What does it say? Like shaken with all due respect the measurements are going to be on you on this one because i was oh, it all in milliliters it, yes it's oh on, yeah because we're working with 25 and 50 on that one uh thingamajig mm -hmm. and um it all good so what i gotta go do down here is get some brandy in this case i'm gonna go for i, I'm gonna, I only have one type of brandy Technically, the Pisco is a brandy. But we're saving that. We are going That's to get true. to that. Yes. I hope I hope so. So, like, I know the ones that I definitely want to do. I definitely want to do... I scoured for that mofo. The Pisco. Yes. I actually tried to look for it in my liquor store, too, and apparently there was, like, four or five different types, but not a single one was sold in my liquor store, <sighs> which makes me very sad, and I couldn't find it. But Amy Chow came in clutch, so... But I want to definitely want to do the Pisco Sour, and I also definitely want to try the Ramos Gin Fizz. Okay, that so I'm then in. do we want to do the Porto, then the uh, then the Pisco, then the uh, the Ramos? Yeah, I think technically we're breaking our pattern there with the two fizzes in a row. But the sour is not technically a fizz, so I think that's fine. I'm not much of a stickler for rules, so I think. How we'll long right. is our stream usually? I try to get like three-ish hours or so, and we're at the 9:30 mark now, so we got like an hour and a half-ish left. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see what we get with this one. Yeah, sweets. 
Okie doke. If, if we don't make it for this stream, mm -hmm. we can make it like after hours, I'd, I guess. I'd honestly love to be able to do an entire episode on Pisco because it's an entirely different type of spirit. Specifically, it's a brandy made from grapes in the places such as Peru. And like, that could just be a whole cause for a whole new episode. That would be fun. So should we then just wait for it to open? Maybe. I think we'll see where we get with it. Okay. The next ingredient that we need, right by your foot, one of those containers is going to be port wine. I think it's the one closest to the back. And in the meantime, I'll take the cutting My board. apologies, I'm kind of blind. That That's sherry. Yeah, it's the one that's not the sherry in this see. case. One of these called for Ooh. sherry. I don't remember which one Ruby it was. Porto. There we go. Indeed. This one, I think, it's not this one. One of the other ones calls for a tawny port, but tawny port's like $30, and this one was like 12 so I went with this one. <laughs> Can't argue with that. It's true, it's true. I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup over here because we're running a little bit low on uh, applicable shakers. But we'll put the ingredients in this Are we going to wash guy. the same with jigger? Oh, this one's already clean. Okay. This one's clean. The other one is not. So I got to clean that one off. And I'm trying to figure out the best way to do so. I know I need this particular guy over mm. here. I'm doing some really fun gymnastics over here to try to get things clean. Don't do that. Do you need me to hold something? I think it'll be all right. It's mostly just like, I don't have a sink over here, so instead I'm using a single container of filtered water to use as my, as my everything. Should I give him a view of what's going on here? Oh no, my jigger! This would be hilarious to watch. <laughs> okay, just so oh you can God. see what exactly I'm looking at at the Hi, present moment. Everybody. Oh, can we see it? I don't know. I think my microphone is... There we go. I'll move that out of the way. Okay, Bye, so he's holding the bucket with his ah, pelvis as a means of, uh, like, having something go. to drain into as he rinses see? the bar see? implements. I'm a proper bartender. Look at me. I'm doing all those speed running strats to get things clean fast. We're working with limited resources over here. It all just makes sense. Also, this towel is terrible. I don't like this one. Can I have another towel, please? Uh... Should one be at least one hanging on the wall over there? Oh, thank you so much. See, this is the beauty of having. Very well, senor. This is the beauty of having at least more than one person. Everything's fine. Everything's great. Fine and dandy. It's fine. It's just not pretty. Everything's fine. Nothing's on fire. I don't know what you're talking about. Actually, Philly was on fire today. <laughs> I got Wait, for real? <laughs> Apparently there was an area over on 5th Street that was actually on fire, and I got at least three text messages saying, Don't go near that, please. And I was like, that's okay. I'm nowhere near 5th Street. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be that person, but like, <laughs> it seems once you get a certain amount of text, you kind of want to investigate. Well, yes. Philadelphia has been very good at trying to warn me about the things happening in Philadelphia, which is very kind of Philadelphia to do. I'm very happy with Philadelphia warning me as a Philadelphia resident. Thank you, Philadelphia. Although that one time that you scared us all and I'm thinking we wouldn't have clean water. Yeah, bad. Bad Philly. Slap on the wrist. No good. There was not water to be sold in the in the stores for at least three days. It was wild. Anyway, we've got a couple of things. Wiped out. out. <laughs> Our 14 was wasteland. Oh my goodness. <laughs> when I was a young lad, young lad of 25, drinking in Pennsylvania, everything was sad. We're all but hey, at least it worked out. It's better than the other way around. It's true. It's better at least than it... the other way around. True. As opposed to being, I guess, too much water and flooding? I was going to say, like, exaggerating the... <sighs> no, all right. Saying it's fine when it's not fine. It's true. It's... Yeah. Oh, it wait, did send when... the city into a panic. That was fun. I wasn't really panicking. I ordered water from the internet, and only one case of it was stolen. So we all good. So the first ingredient that I'm going to add to, in this case, our Porto Flip is 15 milliliters of brandy, or just about half an ounce of that. The brandy that I'm going to use in this case is a Cognac Cavassier. It's just a very fancy brandy, specifically a VS, a VS, which means very special, which means, I'm quoting the trivia from last week correctly, the youngest Cognac in this container, if it's a blend, is at maximum two years old, or no, at minimum two years old, but not greater than three years. And if you got all that, it'll be on the test later, so study up. About a half an ounce of that, or 15-ish milliliters. The next ingredient that we'll add is 45 milliliters of red port, which is just a little bit under the two ounce or 50 milliliter mark on this particular container here. Fine ruby port is um 
It's a fortified wine. Exactly how? I'm not so sure. This one says, a fine port wine from hand-picked grapes. Sure to delight any time, any place. I had that kind of, like a slant rhyme. Cockburns. I hope not. That'd be terrible. So about 45-ish milliliters of that are like just under the equivalent of, it's like, it's like 1.5 ounces. It's a little over 1.5 ounces. And then ounces. we specifically need to measure out 10 milliliters of egg yolk. So for that, we're gonna grab our we're gonna grab our fancy egg separator again, and I'm gonna crack an egg over top of it, and I'm now going to desecrate the jigger with egg white, and we're gonna try to go for about a third of an ounce of it. We're about ten milliliters. But first, what we have to do is crack that egg. Oh! I'm so sad to see this poor child go. They're smiling at me. What should we need? Don't name them, we won't get attached. Dylan, this is what you get for crashing the party. He's happy because it's over. Finally! He said. Don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. Oh goodness gracious. Into the bucket with you. Into the bits of the fire. So now all we gotta do is just let Chicken's that go. Not. So long as we're not too aggressive with it, that egg yolk shouldn't- Oh no, it popped! I'm so sorry. That's okay. That's why we have other glasses. Allow me. We just have to do a doer. That just means we're gonna have to take another life. You know. Okay. He died in vain. <laughs> Dylan couldn't even do it. <laughs> he had one job and he screwed it up. Oh, don't mind me. Just doing my- Rest cool, in pieces. Just doing my cool little washing trick again. Okay, so we need another glass, yes? Indeed. And I grab another egg from over here. This one's got a nice purple gradient to it. Oh, that's what that is. Purple. Poiple. Poiple. It's a poiple egg for the poiple people. Another beautiful glass being potentially defiled by the eggs Would that we Would you rather I grab, grab a plain glass? It's too late. There we go. Oh, that was clean. It's just like... What the sound that the eggs make is they just like right into the bucket. All right, let me see if I can like finagle it a little, finagle it a little bit. I kind of like there we go. Just kind of like oh. it's very snotty, very snotty indeed. Come on, get out of here. Get, get, get. I'm gonna use my finger. Oh goodness. Oh, it feels like snot. Oh, I don't like that at all. Oh goodness gracious. It's a good thing I got a towel. Oh. Oh my god. We need 10 ounces of this, right? I actually have to measure this. Oh. oh. It's a wow squid. Oh. oh wait, this one's yolk. I forgot, this is specifically for yolk. May I have another glass? I'm gonna have to put the egg, the, the yolk in this one, and I guess like, I have to crack the egg. I have to crack the yolk. Oh, here you go. Here you go, bud. There you go, you get your own, get your own glass. All right, so the egg white will be taken to another place. And so now, actually, I think this is worth zooming in on. If you wouldn't mind bringing the cocktail angle over. We'll kind of take the angle from up here a little bit. Oh, hello. This is our egg yolk. So far, this egg yolk is completely unharmed, but that's about to change. I'm going to go <laughs> to my special bag of torture tools and take out what some people call a toothpick. I, for one, call it stabby tiny wooden stick and I'm going to poke and diddle this egg yolk and kind of like you know just get it like just get it to know each other you know just kind of like that I'm gonna give it a little bit of a mix because apparently I'm supposed to be measuring 10 milliliters of this so I better be exact about it as best as I can there's still a little bit of egg white in there all things considered but I think it would be okay oh who's that popping into chat over there Hello, hello, and good evening. It's egg yolk time. More than awesome. Ah, oh crap. crap! I miss so much of flip day, and flips are fascinating to me. Dude, you came just in time. It's flip time, and this one requires. I don't want anything to do with this tiny little defiled uh, stabby stick. We need ten milliliters. Ten milliliters, or just about. Let's see. That's like a third of an ounce. So I'm gonna try as best as I can, and try to take you along for the ride. 10-ish milliliters of egg yolk? 
Oh, I don't like this at all. Am I even going to be able to get 10 milliliters of it? Eh, oh. A little bit more, a little bit more. Hey, okay. Into the, into the cocktail shaker. Oh, that made Long sound. Oh gosh, and it's still drippy. Oh my goodness gracious. We can switch angles. This is. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Oh no, you're good. You're good. This is by no fault of anyone except for me. Into the bucket with you. Away with you. Oh goodness gracious. Okay, is this uh, how we shake it? I feel like we're gonna have to dry shake this first. I don't know whether we need to conserve this egg yolk or not, so I'm just gonna put it to the side. And maybe we'll need it later. It says, oh, actually, it says shake it with ice. So we don't, we're actually not, oh, because Directly it was a flip. to the wet shake, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Indeed, indeed. Red, what else do you have to say, sir? So, I'm um, half liquor from dinner and mostly beer. Hmm, lovely. I'm oh, sorry. It was in the 80s today, so we went to the minor league baseball game tonight. Oh, so nice. I'm half liquor from dinner and mostly beer. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it was like 80 I, degrees I here in Philadelphia, that. too. It was wonderful. I got a little bit of a nice walk in. Wait, did we? Yep. Yep, we got some egg in there. And now we've got to shake it up. Shake it. Shake it. Shake it. Shake it up. Shake. Shake it. Shake it. Shake it up. Shake it up. Shake it down. No. Shake it up. What I say? Shake it. Shake it up. Shake it side. Shake it down. Shake it left. Shake it right. Shake it all the way around. That's how we shake on the show with an X. Hi, I'm Cameron. And I'm with Demetria. That didn't rhyme. Don't care. Give us any confusing directions or you're gonna get decked. Oh wait, I'm the one who's gonna get decked. <laughs> you're the one with the effective weapon right now. It's a blunt force object. That could be a I lot of fun. a melee weapon. Is there a sword? And for the record, I was just trying to rhyme. No, that's good. That's good. I feel absolutely I'm not, I'm not really going to assault my host here. You're gracious enough to, to let me partake in victuals and drink. That's true. I mean, to be fair, I feel like anybody who guest stars on this show is powerful enough to completely wipe me out on live TV. TV, Twitch. Capable, maybe. Willing, maybe not. Ooh. Oh, it's being. It's cool looking. Okay, just say anything about glassware. It says oh strain into a cocktail glass, so that's going to be another coupe-ish in this case. I think um, second from the right, underneath the bar, are going to be these tall ones. And in the meantime, I'm going to give you some nutmeg. Excuse me. Oh my god. It's still happening. Oh my goodness. Brad says, challenge accepted. Wait, you said oh my second goodness. from the right? Yep, you got it. It well, should be those kind of triangular looking ones. Oh, the triangular looking Yeah, exactly. I figure we had that glass hasn't made an appearance yet this evening. Oh, Excellent. Oh, 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 it's got a holder. Indeed. There we go. It's got a place to put your fingies. Indeed. This is another one that you could probably caress in a bosom-like fashion, I suppose, given the logic from the first cocktail, which I keep coming back to. So now what we're going to do is restrain it over top. It doesn't say anything about double straining, so we're just going to go for it. You can pour it all in there. Ooh, what does it say about the nutmeg? Well. We're going to grate it over the top. Do we have a grater? I do. It's going to be on the right-hand side. So we'll grab we the grater. Do have anything smaller than this? Nah, that's all we got, unfortunately. Okay. God, I, I, I just didn't want to... Oh, we're good. Switch cocktail angle? Oh. Oh, you're good. You're good. It's still something I'm trying to get used to. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the other angle. By the way, the bot is still not working. I'm taking pictures of all of these. Don't you worry. Ooh. And now... That looks fun. That that looks like a berry slushy. It looks like mashed up grapes. Specifically the red ones. And now what we gotta do is gotta grate some nutmeg over top of it. Perfect. Oh, heck yes. Grated nutmeg is a wonderful, wonderful smell. But please don't have too much or you might actually uh, lose your marbles. Oh, really? Is, does, will nutmeg do that to you? Will it make you go nuts? Well, Nuts yes, for but you, you would actually have to have, like, a significant amount of it. Oh, it, does that explain the uh, the madness during PSL season? Maybe. Dude, my camera is an absolute mess today. I say licking my camera lens to try to make it better. <laughs> my camera did just have, my, the camera on my phone actually had an update the other day, and I think it actually made things worse. Silly Google, you don't know what you're doing. All right, I think we can switch things back. And 
uh, observe this beautiful marble we created. The Porto Flip. The Porto Flip contains within its contents a half an ounce of brandy. In this case, we used cognac. We have about 1.5 ounces or about 45 milliliters of red port wine. In this case, it was a ruby port. And we have 10 milliliters or about a third of an ounce of egg yolk specifically. The smell is... Oh, nutmeggy. Nutmeggy and whiny. Maybe we should have sniffed it before and after. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely getting a lot of the port wine off of there, though, which is actually, it's very nice. It's raisiny. And it tastes. Very wine heavy. Very, very wine heavy. Oh, I'll push this over here real quick. What do you think of that? I think it's I think it's really really heavy on the port wine. It, it speaks for itself, for sure. It's like there's a so like any time from what we've seen so far, when you take your egg yolk and put it into a cocktail, and in some cases it winds up coming out as a very like a slightly dry but sweeter type of cocktail, as the case of the bosom caresser and the one royal diamond whatever fizz thing um, with the sugar on it. It actually made those drinks seemingly more sweet than it would be without the egg yolk in it. In this case, I think it's just because there's not as many ingredients that are all interplaying together, but the port wine tastes like red wine. It's 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 like it kind of raisiny, it's and it's dry in in the it is the most red wines that I've had are kind of like that. At least in this particular this ruby port in this case. Um, the egg yolk there as well is not really adding too much of a sweetness there. There's really nothing sweet in here aside from that port wine itself. It's just kind of adding a bit of a dryness there. It also just feels colder on the tongue. It's got a different texture. It's a very drying texture specifically, and I think it's a lot of that's coming from the egg. And then like you've got brandy in there, or the cognac in this case, which like honestly. It's a little lost on me. The the cognac is a little. It's it's. I'm not getting too many of the uh, the fruitier notes in there. Although there is something oddly pear or appleish to it. That's like I'm getting a tiny little hint of. I would say. It speaks for yourself. It's such a bless your heart, Southern saying. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, shucks, you saw through me. <laughs> Ding a ling. Oh. What's interesting too is, and I'm not sure, I don't know if we can see it from the cocktail angle, but if you notice, there's a weird separation going on in here where like you can kind of see like a fog at the top as opposed to the bottom. I guess it's from where the, uh, the little bits of white seeped in. Yeah, that's actually kind of interesting. I'm gonna take a little photo of that as well, and it will appear in the cocktail blog later on when I finally make these posts, which was late last week. We need that, like, command number key five or whatever the close-up cam is. Um, Numpad five! I wonder if it'll actually, let me see if I can get a good angle of this. I think if I kind of gear it towards the light a little bit, try to zoom in there. This is, if that's focusing properly, which I'm gonna try to make it focus properly, this, I don't know if y'all can see that, but there's like an interesting, like, kind of, it looks like there's stuff floating in there. It's a little, it's a little, a little, it's a little interesting. And I'm sure that this is probably taking place with the other flip cocktails as well, but because of the color difference, because this is very red in this case, we didn't actually get to see it. Very, very interesting. All I see is like an alien wearing eyeglasses. Yeah, I see that. Cause that's the, that's the, <laughs> <laughs> cause the glass itself has that texture to it. That's great. Shall we switch back? Perfection. I need to get me like one of those, yeah. I need to get like one of those stream decks where I can like click a button on the ground and it switches the angle so that any of us can like, I don't know, like hit a drum or something and we'll switch the angle. That'd be fun. So that was the Porto Flip and that it had just had some brandy, some port and some egg yolk in it. All things considered kind of simple to make and eh, it's, it's kind of anime. Not really my cup of tea, I'd say, but. I mean, it, it, it's not too heavy. Mm -hmm. That's a very fair it, point. It's got... It's actually got, like, more of a... Uh, like, an eggy mouthfeel than some of the other... Uh, some of the other cocktails we made. Yeah. Like, if you're looking for a more creamy cocktail, something mm -hmm. mild, then 
I, I don't see a problem with it. Yeah, I think this would definitely be the way to go. I think it's, as compared to the other ones that we had, pre I think this is probably the least sweet cocktail that we've made so far this evening. So it's a lot more heavy on the the, the alcoholic reagents that you're adding to the, your shaker in this case. Um, and it's got egg yolk in it. So if you're looking for something that tastes like booze and has the, the, the sunnier side of the egg, this would be the way to do it, all things considered. The Porto Flip, indeed. Okie doke. So the next cut, let's see. So we're about at the two at the two hours mark now. And uh, how, how are we feeling so far? I'll admit these have be these have been a little on the boozier end. I know I gotta I gotta fill up my water in a little bit. In here. Mm -hmm. How much water we got in the water we Oh plenty. Oh, we've got plenty. Here, may I fill yours up first? One one more. Absolutely, absolutely. In the meantime, I think if I had to pick a favorite so if you had to pick a favorite so far. Out of the four or five-ish cocktails that we've done so far, one, two, three, four, what would you pick? Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I I like all, all of them, but mm -hmm. I've, I've been uh, trimming down a lot on the uh, the Bosom Caresser mm -hmm. so far. I mean, I'm pretty sure given more time, I'd be uh, picking a little bit more at my uh, uh, fudge. What is it? The, the, the Dylan the, Collins, the Dylan Collins, mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. the or the Porto flip, mm -hmm. but like I don't know, it's it's just something about the bosom crusher. It's just it's 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 like it's like sweet. It is really really sweet. And I I forget that one had that had brandy in it. I know that. Oh, we have the recipe right here. There we go. Brandy. Two ounces of brandy, mm. one ounce of curacao, dash of brandy, and an egg yolk. It. Yeah, that's got like grenadine itself. A very very sweet additive, and it's interesting that it didn't change the color too much. There was only a little bit of grenadine in there, but it is technically it is darker than the the egg yolk, so. the diamond the, the diamond fizz that we made afterwards. That also has a very like yellow eggy color to it. If I had to pick a favorite so far, it's the May West Royal Diamond in case Fizz. Case we need a comparison. Yeah. Most. <laughs> oh, you're totally disaster. good. Yeah. Okay. And then that's the bosom crosser. And this one over here is our it was a May West Diamond Fizz. Yeah. I don't know if the color is being too captured, but I mean, the captured, fizz but... was nice. I, I do like that uh, mm -hmm. that rum. Oh, for sure, yeah. But the, yeah, the fizz I like because it used a goji berry infused bourbon as well as a couple other reagents. It had some pomegranate liqueur in there. It had the egg yolk in there. Actually, I think that one had that one had the whole egg in there. Which was which was unique among the cocktails that we've made this evening, and it also had. I'm trying to. I'm going back to it because it's worth it's worth talking about. The goji infused bourbon, the pomegranate liqueur, the grapefruit juice, the egg, and the champagne. There was champagne in that too, and the the combination of of flavors that we got there. For me, it was very like peanut butter and jelly sandwich like. It was it was very like no, what what it tasted like didn't seem similar to what actually went into it. And I think a piece of that was the champagne having a very unique flavor to it and the goji berries having a very unique flavor. Also, it was rimmed on the side with this hot sugar with sugar, cayenne and cocoa powder, which was just like that was an interesting touch to it, which which I got to respect for. That's definitely been the most out of the park cocktail joke about the diamond, I guess sports sports ball and stuff but that was good another thing to note too is so a lot of these egg cocktails has like they've sat around for a little bit and you might think that your you know your egg yolk cocktails in particular should be dr like should be drank quickly while it's still cold so that it hasn't sat around for a little while but from what we've found so far they taste pretty good after the fact too like a like a warm cocktail is really not that bad it's almost it's almost eggnoggy i think that's maybe why it's not as off-putting it's very good very good indeed so i think what's more than awesome saying over there i see a couple of messages coming from chat one sec, one sec. all good um go sports I assume the alcohol just kind of cooks the egg and then it's kind of like pudding yeah you know like an egg pudding i can kind of i can kind of see that it does look very pudding like oh, dang now i want like an actual egg pudding i legitimately saw pudding in the store the other day and was like <sighs> Do I get pudding? I was like, no, nah, I don't eat pudding. I don't I don't normally eat pudding. I feel like I should have brought snacks again like I did for the spicy spirits. That was a good idea for the spicy spirits. Oh my gosh. There's little like sesame uh rods from yeah, the terminal. honey the honey oh. sesame sticks. Those are so good. Those are very good. And they definitely take the edge off of spicy. Mm -hmm. 
Jasper's saying, or custard. Yes, like custard. Custard, okay. Custard's like a tastier word than pudding. I don't know, I've never actually had custard. I've never had anything that's considered custard. Custard's like, to me, it's like a, that's like a, a dirty word. Custard sounds very like, eesh, you know? It's just, it's just a firm pudding. It's a very firm pudding. Custard. It's a, it's a firm egg pudding. Custard. It almost feels like a curse word if you say it in the right inflection. Custard. custard. You're a custard. You're a custard. That's a compliment. As in, as in, you are, you are firm. Classy pudding. And you are eggy. See, you're yes. classy pudding. Yeah, that's what the C in custard stands for. Classy. Obviously. So as we move on to the latter, latter like third of the part of the next cocktail stream, I'd like to offer a quick reminder that if you're into cocktails and stuff, we do this every single Wednesday. It's fun. We've got plenty of people that are coming on every once in a while. I've got Amy Chow this week. We're having more than awesome coming by next month. We got a whole, we got a whole. Oh, I love having people behind the bar because you know drinking alone, it's not as fun as drinking with friends. Because and it's also it's a small bar back here, so it's a, we take all the help that we can get. But so, we gotta do another cocktail this evening. I'm thinking there are two that I definitely want to go over. And one is the Ramos Gin Fizz and the Pisco Sour. Because there was a lot of searching that was done. And if we don't try that Pisco, four, shops. four different shops. Four shops across Ken County. Oh my gosh. And I took a look at my own liquor store and they apparently stock in Pennsylvania four or five different types of Pisco and not a single one of them was in the store. They were just like... They just not stocked there. So I was like, ugh. So at some point I should definitely do an entire stream on Pisco, which nice. is a great brace brandy from Peru. So uh, as a preliminary rating, mm -hmm. you would need two ounces of Pisco. Pisco, Pisco. Three quarters ounce of lime juice. Um, half an ounce of our simple syrup. Mm -hmm, which we made. Fresh, like fresh, fresh right before syrup. stream. Indeed. That was fun. A whole egg white. Oh boy, we've got some egg white left. And two to three dashes of Angostura bitters. Excellent. Finally, we bring out our bitters. Finally, it's about time. Ow. I'm okay, just being dramatic. Wonderful, yeah, nothing down there hurts you unless you drink enough of it. More than awesome saying, do the Ramos first because it takes a good like five minutes to do its magic. Ah, but actually I feel like that's an even better reason to save it until the very last thing that we do. It's teasing. Indeed. So we got our Ango. I just got a horrible idea. Oh yeah? Do share. Okay, so what if we prepared the Ramos Gin Fizz and I shake it while you prepare the Pisco? Oh my god, the entire time? If that's all right. Oh yeah! We're gonna go through absolute hell. You're going to go through absolute hell. But it's worth it. But it's worth it. Because then we can f we can think okay. about the Pisco in the background, but we do the Ramos Gin Fizz. Okay, so that's what we'll do. Okay, we'll do so a Ramos we're going Gin Fizz to, at the same time. We're going to start with the Ramos Gin Fizz recipe. Indeed, and I'm going to pull up. This one needs a gin So we're going juice, to need two juice. ounces of gin, oh, yeah, a so half sorry. ounce of lemon juice. Do we have lemon left? Oh, we got some lemon left. Okay. We're going to need another ounce of our simple syrup, two dashes of orange flower water. Oh, we got that. Oh, cool, because I had no idea. One ounce of cream, uh, one egg white, mm -hmm. and then two to three ounces of Clout soda water. Soda. Indeed. So the Ramos Gin Fizz is interesting because there's apparently a whole history behind the notoriety of this particular cocktail. It is said that the technique to make a Ramos Gin Fizz is depend it depends upon how long you actually shake this damn thing for. There's an entire like write up that I have all through here about the different ingredients that you put in there. Um, but I'll offer a little bit of a little mutterance from this came from the rawreport.com. It says, what can be said about the Ramos Gin Fizz? that hasn't already been muttered hatefully under the breath of a busy bartender. It's special for a number of reasons. Primarily, it sits unchallenged on the throne of being the most difficult and labor-intensive drink in the entire classic cocktail universe. I don't know what second place would be, but I know it's not close at all to the, gin, uh, the Ramos Gin Fizz. The quickest way, it is the quickest way, so reputation goes, to get your bartender to absolutely despise you. Why do people <laughs> still order it? Well, if you have to ask, it's probably because you've never tasted one. And that's the little teaser of what Monsieur Rob has to say about the Ramos Gin Fizz. As the lesson goes, 
You have to shake this thing for a long, 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 long time in order to get that awesome fizzy head that appears in the highball glass that you pour it into as you pour the club soda in there. So what we're going to task ourselves with is... What kind of gin we got? We have a couple Sorry. of types. So the gin that I've seen a couple of times is an old Tom gin. I don't have any old Tom gin. It's usually going to be a little bit more sweet. The only one that I have that would come close to an old Tom gin is probably just going to be a very basic gin. Just something that isn't too, too uh, divisive. It's just an easy drinking gin from Pennsylvania. Is it an American dry? Is it a London dry? I don't know because it's not labeled. It's just gin. So that's all we get, just gin. We also need our lemon juice. We got a lemon. We need some lime juice. So I got that lime. What else do we need in there? Simple syrup, which we have over there. Should be in the oh, small oh. container right next to you. I need to go in here for my- <laughs> I forgot the. Uh, I'm, I'm. I'm sorry. I, I, I need to show the folks at home. <laughs> we, uh, oh my god! We kind of had a brain fart earlier. We were like, we were like, what do we call this thing? I don't know how to label it. Sin. I. I mean, it achieves the purpose. It absolutely does. Sin. I can't say that on stream, maybe. Dry shake too, like it's 10 It's not like minutes. it's a cuss word. Oh my goodness. Oh, more than awesome was saying there's a place here that somehow does a Ramos that takes only five minutes and it has a head bigger than the glass. There must be some chemistry involved in there. Gotta be chemistry. Surface tension. Surface tension indeed. Okay. So yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna combine everything together, including the egg white, into a shaker. I've got a shaker almost prepped. Is it prepped? Um... Yeah, you can put it. Everything looks clean. I'll give it a rinse, just to be sure. Absolutely. Just to make sure that we're shaking things properly. I've also been told too that when you shake this, what you want to do is you actually want to add the spring from your Hawthorne strainer into the cocktail shaker. That way, it offers a bit more <laughs> shaky shake to it. So that's what we're going to try. Okay. So more than awesome says, uh, you need to dry shake too, like 10, pl like 10 plus, plus minutes. minutes. Lol, some syrup. For the Ramos, you basically shake it dry forever, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you put it in the freezer for a while, then you freezer. add your seltzer. Oh my goodness. It's weird voodoo science I, the science I don't get. So, so what you're saying is we shake it dry for a really long time, then we put the entire shaker in the freezer, and then we shake it wet, and then we put the soda water in it? All right, but we As need to take the, the spring out. Gotta take the spring out. We don't do the spring? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gotta take the spring off of the like off of the strainer and put it into the shaker. Cause I I, I guess like uh, more more surface area I think to just like completely rattle up the egg on the inside. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right. So what we'll do first is we will take naturally all of our liquid reagents and put it into I our. I have never shaker. seen orange blossom water. Orange blossom water. If you're making your own grenadine, add a, a teensy little bit of this. It makes an amazing difference. Found that from the interwebs. So for our Ramos Gin Fizz, the first thing we need is, was it an ounce or two ounces of gin? I think I have another jigger over there somewhere. This would be a silver one. Bing, my jigger. There we go. All right. First would add two ounces or about 59-ish milliliters of our gin. It's just a regular easy drinking gin, according to the state of Pennsylvania. And who else do I have to trust than the government? Okay, so we're going to do about half an ounce of lime. Mm -hmm. So we need to give that a cut and then a shake. I have the cutting board over here. Making the use of all the all of what we have. There's still a leftover grapefruit from before. I will put that over on the plate where it will not get hurt. Much obliged. Okay, half an ounce. That's the second line, Nippa. Hmm? Yes. So what was it, half an ounce? Yes, the second line from the bottom or the top. It's, a, it's symmetrical like that. It's a beautiful, wonderful thing. And I think while you're cutting that- Mother of pearl. Mm -hmm. More than awesome also says, I actually, I love the fact that we have, actually, I'm gonna bring your phone up a little here. I got some chat on this side. With the bar with an X, you could probably dry shake forever. Ice shake to make it real cold, then pour in with your seltzer to make it real foamy. Perfect. Then that's what we'll do. I like that idea. It's a it's a it's a community effort to put these beautiful things together. We've got Emmy Chow going for the lime juice right now. I think what I'll do is I'll steal That's the quarter. I'll steal away the lemon and be the heathen who cuts oh. on his own bar. And then I could have just lent you the 
the, the, the cutting board. I'm a monster, or so they say. I mean, it's your bar. It's true. It's our bar. We're together in this. Cue the Bugs Bunny meme. I, just remember, you don't have a hidden freezer there and have a cooler. Oh, oh, I, have, oh I have a freezer. We've got a freezer back here. And I hardly know her. Only time I'm making that joke this stream. Freezer damn near killed her. There we go. And now we require the juice of this 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 lemon. It's yellow. As opposed to the lime, which chooses to be green. Well, I mean, technically, uh, the lemons were uh, cultivated, mm -hmm. man-made. The limes are somewhat natural. And apparently, too, I, I, I don't know if this is like internet hoo-ha, but supposedly limes, if you let them grow and stay on the, the, like the, the stem, like in the tree, they turn yellow. The inside will still remain that kind of greenish color, but the limes that you buy are actually not completely ripe. They shouldn't be. Otherwise, they're not USDA-specified limes. Okay. Can you rinse this out for me? Absolutely. Next, we need a full ounce of our simple syrup. We're about 30 milliliters. There we oh, go. Oh, um, uh, right. <laughs> right. The orange blossom water will be slight. It will only be two, two dashes. dashes. So a very, and like, when they say dashes, it's a very, very tiny dash of it. Because orange blossom water is very, very potent in flavor. Nice. It's pretty good. Right? Mm -hmm. Wrong side, wrong side. Oh, you're good, we can just pour it into the other one. It's all gonna get combined together anyways. Well, I guess I'll just be extra sweet then, I don't know. Can you hand me some of the scraps that we've got? What I thought? Indeed. I mean, technically there is- Bucket! 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 There we go. And now we need the two dashes of orange flower water. And I would yeah. say, that if you'd like, to put a teeny bit in this bar spoon. Like as small a drop that you could get would probably be enough orange blossom water. Perfect. Oh, this one. It's like two dashes. Now do it one more time. And this is what that I would consider our dash to be. Nice. I find there is a Disney Vero Beach Resort a bit. The Disney Vero Beach Resort, Resort used some sort of cleaner, and whatever that cleaner is, it smells exactly like orange blossom water. So it is... Why should it be some other variation mm. of Pledge? I would not even be surprised. <laughs> Brad says, that feels like how the Kroger is going to sell those gross limes nobody wants. One ounce of cream. One ounce of cream, which I believe I brought upstairs, and I hope I did. Did I? Yeah. I, I did! You brought I, it up with the eggs. I did, I did, I did. Now, when we read this over again, we were assuming it, it now, would usually mention light cream, but we don't have that. We have heavy cream, so we're hoping So this is going to be a very interesting experiment. I think that using heavy whipping cream is going to whip it a bit and create an even heavier foam. So hopefully we think. won't have to freeze it as long. Maybe, maybe. Fingers crossed. Because it doesn't say gotten. anywhere specifically whether you use light cream or heavy cream. One source says light cream, but I think they're intentionally trying to make the job harder on us. But we know better. Basically, between the two of us, we're a full chemist. We... <laughs> so we know what we're doing. One ounce of the cream... That, that's a line, if I've ever heard one. There you go. All in there. And then, we add the egg white. It says to use one egg white. And we have a single egg white left over from one of the cocktails from earlier. That's an egg white if I ever saw it. Oh my goodness. All right. Put right. that carefully into our bucket. I think it was our, or oh, the last one is a piece of sour, so I will okay. actually need this again. So we're going to dry shake it for 15 to 20 seconds, open it, add three to five cubes. And then? Or a generous handful of pebble ice. Seal and shake vigorously for about three to four minutes. 
Meanwhile, add about an inch or two of soda water to the bottom of a chilled 10 to 12 ounce straight side Collins glass. So what we're gonna now do- Now add the cream. Now add the cream? Add all ingredients except the cream and the soda water. What? And slowly pour the remainder of the cocktail in the center hole until the foam heads lift above the thing. If you run out of cocktail, you can add a bit more soda, but don't push your luck. Even the best made Ramos will mushroom. The head gets too tall. Garnish with a straw, a balance atop the foam, and sense of accomplishment. This, what? This is why my father says. Please shake five or Measure seven twice. Minutes. Then strain the cocktail Warlocks. off the ice into the glass. Strain the cocktail off the ice into the glass until the liquid line nearly reaches the top. We done goofed. Well, that's according to one set of instructions. I wonder if we take their word for it. Jasper says, one thing that's always really cool about egg drinks, if there's any foam, it's basically a pseudo meringue that can defy gravity. Mm -hmm. More than awesome says, shake, shake everything, everything but, but the, the soda, soda runner. You know, I think we try it just the way that we do. All things fail, we can have an entire oh. show specifically about the- Oh. oh. We can oh, is that why the- there's that- why? Well, we keep on shaking it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. Well, yeah we'll, we'll be fine. We'll it's fine. starting to curdle a little bit in there. I think we'll be fine. We're gonna emulsify the egg. We're basically a chemist. We know exactly what we're doing. Oh my god. See, that's why we have to shake it a bunch. Ice cubes! Oh, but we have to shake it dry first. Ice cubes, we need them. Then we, we do the ice only, cubes. We do a dry shake for a little bit, and then a wet shake for a lot of it. So in the meantime, as we're doing the dry shake for what seems like forever, we're gonna have Pisco Sour in the background. No, we need to dry shake for a little bit, the wet shake for and a lot shake of it. the wet shake a lot of it? Yeah. Does the wet shake a lot of it? Can I please get the ice cubes? Ice cube, ice cube, ice cubes. Two. Ice cube, ice cube, ice cube. When it comes to the Ramos Gin Fizz, if you've got a customer right there, it's all about, it's a high stakes environment. I got big freaking ice cube. Brad's saying dry right, right, forever, right. ice to get cold. Oh, dry forever? Dry forever, then ice to get cold. See, that's- Look, see, we've got conflicting directions from conflicting websites. Well, see, see, this is the thing, Brad, with the thing that's hard about the Ramos Gin Vin Fizz is the customer. But the customer's always right. So, if we were I'm making the Gin Fizz what, this way- What has our hubris rocked? Oh my god. Okay, you know what? How about this, more than awesome? You tell me when to stop. <laughs> And so now the perpetuality of shaking dry, or so they say, continues for our dear guest star over here. As we make, in the background, I suppose, a Pisco Sour. I will be in bed when you have to stop. <laughs> you know what, Bear? <laughs> okay, oh fine. Gosh. Plan B, Jasper, Mom, spot me. Oh my God. How about the time it takes for me to complete this Pisco over here? Well, a, a more in-depth explanation of the, the, the beauties of Pisco will come in a completely different episode. But while we've still got this chaotic energy about us, let's just freaking go for it! So to make a Pisco sour... Oh, I have to write it up on the board. <laughs> John first says it's Olive Garden all over again! Meanwhile... <laughs> Pisco sour. <laughs> Because Pisco is apparently wonderful. <laughs> this is why I told Cameron, I'm just going to come with two bottles of the secret thing. Nothing I make needs 10 minutes of shaking. Oh my god, this is awesome. Jasper says, yes. This is such chaotic energy. <laughs> so the first thing we're going to add is a fresh, open up a fresh bottle of Pisco. It's a Peruvian spirit that is distilled from grapes. It's a brandy, technically, because grapes are brandy. Grapes are fruit. Oh my god, this thing does not want to open. Oh, we need a cordial then, don't we? Indeed. First opening. We're gonna take a sniff. Damn it. Quick sniff. Quick sniffage? How does it smell? Strong. Yeah, wow. Mmm. Wow. Ooh. Can you wait? Mmm. Mmm. Taste? Taste? Tasting the Pisco. Oh, I gotta clean this off. Yeah, that's very, 
That is very, very potent. It's oh almost my like... God. <laughs> I think I've caught my tongue off. It's super... I, taste buds. I don't know exactly what that tastes like. There's something that it tastes similar to, and I can't quite put my finger on it. It's almost like the Why dryness of vinegar. This? Because can't people get... hate the bartender. No, I mean, it's it, 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 it seal. It's not sealing. Exactly. Physics doesn't want you to seal. We went to a bar before baseball that had a Ramos on the menu. I never order it because I'm impatient. Two ounces of your Pisco. I'm gonna try to do this as fast as possible to make the brunt on the baby chow less. vinegar, Cameron? What's that? Balsamic vinegar? It's balsamic vinegar? No! A different type of vinegar. There's like a hint of a different type of vinaigrette in there. Exactly what kind of vinaigrette is beyond me. I can't quite put my finger on it. I need three quarters of an ounce or about 22 milliliters of lime juice. And for the sake of time, I'm just going to squeeze an entire lime into the shaker. That'll be about three quarters of an ounce. Speed tending. So yeah, that we can more. save our friend. I mean, it goes as long as it goes. It's a race against the fizz. There we go. Lime juice, squizzed. I don't think we'll need these guys anymore. Squeeze and squeeze. Next, what we're gonna need is a bit of simple syrup. Half an ounce, or about 15 milliliters of that. Other side of the glass. Oh yes, gotta fill up. When you're working as hard as the bartender is, you gotta make sure that you fill up on your libation. Otherwise, things get a little boring, you know? Next, we'll need an egg white, meaning I'm gonna have to crack another egg. And hopefully, not make some have an horrible mistake. Here, hopefully. <gasps> Should we use the devil egg? Sure, why not? The time is now to use the devil egg. Which I have to lean over and comfort myself to do. Okay, now... Ah! Now my mind goes to, like, deviled seasoning... Like in an egg. Oh yeah, my right. My stomach just turned like this lime cream. Oh my gosh! Thinking of deviled eggs at a time like this. Red egg for Easter. There we go. I also feel like if you are donezo on shaking that Ramos, you do need to make an ice shake to get it real cold. Oh yeah. So I'm I thinking don't know if maybe donezo. Ooh, so you know what I think? While I'm shaking the pisco sour, you should do the uh, the wet shake <laughs> on the Ramos gin fizz. I okay. Think that'll work. All right. Uh, Jasper says deviled uh, egg for a hell of a cocktail. Oh my god. Deviled egg cocktail. All right. Everyone in there. We don't need you anymore. I'm putting you away. Get out, get out of here. We got to make another flip. All right. Uh, we need flips. the ice. Okie dokie. So now I'm going to grab the ice. Ice is in the freezer. Big ol' ice cube. Oh, Thank you. There we go. Okay. Okie doke. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna begin dry shaking the pisco sour, which has the egg white, and the Angostura, the Angostura bitters goes on top afterwards. Double shaking action. It's a shame the photo command isn't working. This is beautiful. Yeah. Oh, it's kind of leaking. It's kind of leaking. Damn it. What's up? I'm trying to get it to... Oh, that's not connected to that computer. <laughs> it's okay, the photo command is actually not working right now. I will take that challenge. <laughs> what has our hubris wrought? I think there's something up with the- Oh my god, it's trying to squirt on me. It's disgusting. Oh my god. I must- I have to vent it out a little bit. There we go. Vent it a little bit. I need to look into that, but I'll, I'll fix it next week. Like, I, I will fix it next week. I'm gonna take an impromptu sick day. I deserve it. All right, so now. Very interesting wall. What's that? You have a very interesting wall. Yes. There are so many things behind the camera that y'all don't even get the chance to see. That's why you have to guest star on the bar with the next. Now I'm gonna add some ice to here so I can do the wet, the corresponding wet sink of my pisco sour. There we go. Absolute chaos is occurring over here. <laughs> Jasper says that's what she said. <laughs> and more than awesome is a fan of this. Oh my gosh. Okay, now, double wet shake at the same time. <laughs> Whew. 
Okie dokie. So, for the Ramos Gin Fizz, what we're going to need... Wait a minute. This is egg white. Yes. You put the egg yolk aside. I didn't put any egg white in the Pisco Sour. We can fix this. Maybe that's why it was... Don't tell anyone. Tell no one. So where are you with we that Ramos Gin Fizz? That's the wrong corner. Emulsify your egg. Shake that Ramos Gin Fizz. And literally never stop. Oh my god. Last serving cocktail cream should be a little chaotic. Me. This is what happens at the fancy bar with the next cocktail bar. Joshua says, seems like your brain got a little scrambled oh my while goodness. making two drinks. These egg jokes are great. Keep them coming. All right. Now it is officially finished. Nice. That was an excellent crack. So what we're going to need... I'm gonna put away these ingredients so we got some bar space to work around with. Son of a duck. Pisco, pisco, pisco. <laughs> oh man. Have it nose dying laughing about the forgotten egg. Oh my god. <laughs> Seriously, I cannot believe I forgot that. Okay, so what we're gonna need is I'm What'd gonna... you say there? Excellent, exceptional, exemplary. You are excruciating. One coupe glass. This is what you get for sour. egging Jasper on. It's awesome. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. I'm you shell shocked by those to, comments. You just had to encourage them to poach the subject. Poach. Get it? Poach. <laughs> I, I like the way that you poach for that joke. Okay. That I yolk. <laughs> now I just have egg on my face. There should be a tall glass. Somewhere down there, yes, the tall and thin one. This is going to be the container that we put our Ramos Gin Fizz in. Oh, um, like now-ish? So, for the rest of the Ramos Gin Fizz, if it all comes out correctly, is... We forgot to put the spring in. Whatever. Next time, next time, next time. I'm not doing that again. I cannot tell you how many times I had to spring that dang Just give me the fucking spring. Where's the spring at? I gotta do the spring. Where's the spring? Oh my god, where'd I put the thing? Where's my strainer? I don't- Wait, wait, I found it. There we go, watch. Okay, what- Oh my god. I got it. Well, doesn't that look familiar? Springy. <gasps> Can I do it? Sure, why not? Where are we putting the pisco sour in? Pisco sour is gonna go in this coupe glass. Okay. Now, with just as much spring in my step as, it, as there was previously, or maybe more, I don't know. Oh, wow. Oh, wait. Should we wait? I think. Feel free to pour the Pisco Sour as I take care of the rest of this Ramos Gin Fizz. Hi there. Oh, hey. Okay. Ooh, let me I think it would be a little finicky. There we go. We'll do. There we go. Pisco. Pisco sour. Oh, that is lovely. That looks like bodily fluid, but also very lovely. I'm sure it smells great too. Ooh, even better. It gets garnished with some Angus. Oh my God, look at that. Oh, there's the fizz or the, the sour part. It's the crema. Saving that just for you, my dude. Nice. And now what we get to do... Oh, this is really cool. This is really cool. And I'm going to tell you exactly how. I'm going to give you this toothpick. What you're going to do is take some of those Angostura bitters and drip them up on top into little, little drops. And then you'll take the toothpick and drag it across the Angostura bitter marks. And you can make like little hearts with them. It's like the cutest freaking thing.
Just go absolutely creative wild with it. This is so freezing cold. Oh my god. Okay. Oh, we are constantly cracking up with them. <laughs> nice, Jasper. Hmm. See, if you drag it through, like, all the way through them, you should be able to, like, kind of drag the white into the red and drag the red elsewhere. To be honest, I've never actually done this before, so I could just be wrong, but I've seen it on the internet, so it must be true. That one just messed up. That one's a deer, okay? Oh, that one's kind of a heart. Really getting my workout this this time. Wow. Man, I can see how you were struggling with this. The real struggle is like trying to uh to un unclog it. Mmm, that's true. Is our piece go sour? I'm gonna take a very quick photo of it as I take a tiny little break. Excelente! Very good! That's a this really a pretty piece go. Oh, thank you! Thank you! Okie doke. Shall we switch the- ooh, ooh, ooh! I must not rush the artist. Instead. Oh no, it was just a one itty bitty dot. Teeny tiny dot. Right there. Yeah. That's where the dot is. Yep. Unless. Unless. There Does the creative spirit move you? Oh, that one kind of looks like a heart from the thing. Oh. There we go. I need to take a beautiful picture of that. That's cute. My hands are so jittery. Oh my god. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, okay. Now, really? Only if you tell me I'm allowed to. Please stop. I am stopping. The Ramos Gin Fizz is upon us. Oh, I have to put the password in my phone because. Oh. There we go. Nice. So now I'll take the Pisco Sour off to the side. And we'll replace its spot with the container that will hopefully become our Ramos Gin Fizz in a little bit. Could I ask you to do me a favor and hold on that piece of wood back there? All I need is a little counterbalance. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Perfection. We got, we got. This is supposed to be the angle for a Ramos Gin Fizz. So wait, 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 wait. So we need to add all ingredients for the cream. We did that bad. Whatever. Three to five cubes, generous handful. Shake vigorously for about three to four minutes. Meanwhile, add one to two inches of soda water to the bottom of a chilled 10 to 12 ounce straight sided Collins glass. Now add the cream, whatever. Briefly shake, mix it all together. Strain the cocktail off into the ice, off the ice into the glass until the liquid line reaches nearly the top. Then put the glass in the fridge to let the foam set for at least a minute, ideally three or four. Once it's set, retrieve the glass, poke a small hole in the top of the center with a straw or a spoon to slowly pour the remainder of the cocktail into the center hole until what? the foam head reaches above the rim. So what we need to do, is we need to take some soda water, which is down by your right underneath the bar, those little bottles that are upside, those little bottles in the little bin down there, those are all soda water. So we'll add about two to three ounces of soda water. I'm just eyeballing this. This has been a lot of effort so far. Soda water. Now, we will pour in the ingredients of our cocktail. I don't think it says anything about... Oh, strain the cocktail off into the ice. So we'll need a strainer. So I got another strainer over here somewhere. This guy. I, whoa, definitely toss that into the bucket. Whoops. That is a bit... <laughs> that thing made a mess. Sorry, so now, can I get cream all over you? Only a little bit, but we're good. So now, we'll strain that into here until the level of the line reaches up here. Oh, evidently that's all the liquid we have. Look a small hole in the center with a foam with a... Do we need to put ice in there? Add the cream. We need to add one or two inches of soda water to the bottom of a chilled, straight-sided Collins glass. Add the cream, briefly shake, mix it all together, strain the cocktail off of the glass, off the ice into the glass until the liquid line reaches the top, then put the glass in the fridge, let the foam set for a minute, ideally three or four. You know what we're going to do? We're just going to just leave it like that. We'll switch the cocktail angle. We'll let that foam set, and then we'll pour some soda water into it. I'll put that into the fridge for a little bit. 
It's a hot mess, but at least now we can uh, try our uh, our Pisco Sour. Whatever you do, do not look at the Porto Flip. Do not look at the Porto Flip. You looked at the Porto Flip. Oh my god, it's completely separated. What is going on with that thing? Yo, you want to switch that angle again? <laughs> Quick diversion! Look at this shit. I don't know if oh. I want to touch that now. Oh, oh dear. No, 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 no. No, that's fine. That's fine. We'll take that away. <laughs> I should not have pointed that out. I'm sorry. Oh, there's something I'm going sorry. on with that. Something going on with that part of the flip over there. It's really flipping out. <laughs> that is interesting, all things considered. Okie doke. Do we dare? So, try not to look at the portal flip. Try not to look at the portal flip. Not thinking about the portal flip. Definitely not thinking about the portal flip. <laughs> Stop thinking, it! Not thinking about it. It's just a berry foam. <laughs> it's just a cocktail. It can't it's just a berry foam. It's just, it's just. Anyway, the Pisco You'll be Sour. The portal flip can't hurt you when it's over there. It can't hurt us from here. So the Pisco Sour is exactly what it sounds like. It's a Pisco Sour. Got some, it's got some lime juice in there, it's got some pisco, it's got some egg white, you know, it's great stuff. A little bit of simple syrup. Yes, it has for it is our hot mess. It smells and like yes, more than awesome, it is interesting. It's got it's got a nice smell of that Angostura, probably because we put some Angostura up on top of it. Other than that, it smells very it's got a lime essence to it. I can I can sense I can sense that. It's pretty pretty limey. Uh, there's a little bit of an odor that's coming from the pisco that I recognize from the taste that I had of it, but again, like I can't quite place exactly what that taste or smell is. I sure don't know. I need to think about it a little more. But the pisco sour tastes like Ooh. That's pleasant. You know? The Pisco Sour on its way here almost kind of tastes like a Concord grape. It's kind of, it kind of tastes almost very, like, kind of raisiny. Damn it. Raisiny in the sense of, like, like, that Concord grape flavor. Not as sweet, but very really similar, like, so, like, if you've ever opened up a box of raisins, like raisinettes, the little sun-kissed ra raisins or whatever, and the red box with the little label on it, this tastes the way that the box smells. Not the raisins themselves. Yeah, I, well, I wasn't making a face because it was bad. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's just, I have a cavity and, you know, cold Ooh. stuff. Mm, that'll do it. Yeah. 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 I, I got it filled, but, like, it was a deep cavity. It's, cold stuff is going to work. Oh, I can completely understand that. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah it, I didn't realize it, that. It is, it is pretty decent for drink. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very. And honestly, I, I'm a guy who. What, what were we talking about earlier that tasted like raisin bran? Um, the goji that? powder itself. Ooh, it was the goji. Yeah, it was the goji powder. The goji powder for the for the goji infused bourbon kind of tasted like raisin bran. This pisco sour reminds me of a like a box of raisinets or the sun kissed raisins specifically. Yeah, wouldn't raisinet imply chocolate? Yes, you're absolutely right. I have a box of raisinets on my desk. That's probably why I was my mind was focusing on it. I actually really like that. There's a bit of like a. I think it's the it's the angle of the lime juice in there because most of the sours I've had are made with lemon juice. So that's actually very nice for a for a sour. I like that. It's 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 dry, but it's got a cool looking head to it, and that little Angostura, a little heart on top. I think just brings the whole thing together, aesthetically pleasing. Very very good stuff. Hi, Disney Queen. Dearest rises from the basement, and as we as she does so. I think it's time to go back for the Ramos Gin Fizz that's sitting in the refrigerator. Now or never. It's now or never. That will that will be, I think, our final cocktail of the evening. I think, personally, yeah. I think I'm kind of tired myself out from all of this. So let's see. I'm going to the fridge and grab what looks to be a rather solidified thing here. Oh, yeah, that's... Hmm. Now the question is whether or not we can get this to rise up above the glass itself. I literally have no idea what to expect of this, so let's switch angles and add some more club soda and see what happens. Now, supposedly what we're supposed to do here, at least according to one set of instructions, is take a straw. I don't have any straight straw. Actually, no, I have, I got these, I got this yellow one. I'm gonna take this straw, 
I'm gonna make a little divot inside. There is a very thick foam here. I can sense that. I can see that. So now that I got a little hole in the center, I'm gonna try to pour the club soda directly into that hole to allow the foam to rise. Well, the drink itself is certainly rising. Okay. Dripping a little bit. But that's it. Brad says, hey, Anna. Yay, Anna. Hi. I need to bug Anna about the best place to Airbnb between now and May 24th. We actually did it. Anna, hear that? Everybody loves you. I don't know. Just for being you. Yeah, something like that. You'd be surprised <laughs> at uh, how much that could be enough for people. So what we have here... Personally, I've never had a Ramos Gin Fizz before, and despite the the mis the mistakes, the missteps that we took, it worked. That has a very, very visible foam at the top of it, and it's rising out of the glass. That is so cool! Wow, I love that! Okay, okay. I'm super curious how this tastes. So we switch back and see if we can give this a, a review worthy of praise, I guess. I was trying to think of an egg pun there and I couldn't think of it. Oh my goodness. It's going to come to us at like damn near midnight. This this foam is Rebel Ramos for the first mm. time. Mmm. That's nice and citrusy. That's really good. An incredible Ramos indeed. Thank you so much for your kind words. That's not bad. We shook that for a long time. I actually really like the foam. It's got a nice sourness to it. It's it very... reminds me of a meringue. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, I think it was Jasper who was saying, like, it's kind of like a meringue, like, inside of a drink. That's good. Oh, oh, this is unwieldy. Mm hmm. It's, it's got, like, it's like, so top heavy because of the cream is all the way at the top. Now, supposedly, this drink is worth the time. What do you think? If this doesn't open up the secrets of the universe for me, I'm going to go knocking butts. You ever had a lemon meringue, like, cookie or pie? Yes, actually. I, I, we, uh, we used to make them around holidays. That is like... Oh, I'm thinking of those, like, lemon Girl Scout cookies. I don't know what they're called. But this reminds me so much. Lemonades. Lemonades? Yeah, yeah. My baby sister's okay. a girl scout. Okay, so. that's what it reminds me of. Oh my gosh, I I like that. That is, from my perspective, I don't like things that are really sour, but I do like the taste of lemon. And like, contrary to the lemon cello, which is way too sweet for me, this is like a wonderful sweetness. I love like the meringue pie. It's almost like a, like I imagine it's like the texture of key lime pie, but it's lemon instead. And I really, really like the taste of those like lemon lemonade cookies from the Girl Scouts, and it reminds me a lot of that. And like the foam itself, like if I just poke another hole in it and get a bit of that, mmm, that's tasty. Now the million dollar question is: Is it worth ordering and making your bartender rethink their career choices? If this is what I received, no. Because I'll be honest, this is eye-opening in terms of, like, a flavor of a drink and the presentation of it, but this isn't, like, blowing anything out of the water for me. But I don't know if that's because of, like, I'm sure there's a lot of technique this, that goes around making a Ramos Gin Fizz. And in this case, for, for, for this attempt, pretty good. Tastes pretty good. I would definitely make another one of these for myself if I had, like, the time that I wanted to spend on it. That, that uh, you know, self, uh, a nice self-care Sunday drink this would be. And it actually, the heavy cream actually worked really well. I'm glad that it did. A couple of comments from Jasper saying, I've seen an Asian bartender. I don't know his name, but I wish I did. He does these all the time and they rise out of the glass like three inches. Do you think Lycos would drink this? I think he yeah. would. I think, I think it's a little too... Okay, maybe. In terms of... So I think there's probably some alcohol flavor in there that I'm not picking up on, and I'm sure that he would. But my first impression is that he probably liked this. 
No, it's definitely more lemon than booze. He, mm-hmm. he might be able to tolerate, like, if he were to take a sip off of someone else, but... Drink uh, the whole thing, I don't think so. I mean, there is a lot of soda water in there, so the alcohol content is farther down than it would be if it was just the spirits on his, on his own. Um, but again, like, I don't know if that's because, like, we did a different, like, um, measuring tactic or otherwise. Randall says, the only drink I've ever had with eggs is eggnog 151 rum. So, like, taking the 151 and putting it into the eggnog. Sounds like a wonderful way to spike some eggnog and make it even more boozy. Or did they have, like, a special holiday edition of mm. Bacardi that came Oh, like a, like a Bacardi nog or something like that? I could, I could see that, honestly. That sounds kind of good. What kind of 151 rum did you use? The only two that I know of would be, like, a Gosling's or, like, a Lemon Heart. I've never tried Lemon Heart. Only Gosling's. That's all I have down here. That's on the list. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, to everybody who's caught, in, uh, who's coming around, thank you. This is the, the so the final cocktail we made this evening was the Ramos Gin Fizz, and to be perfectly honest, for our first attempt, it's not that bad. I think the head could have been a lot bigger than it was. Uh, we definitely screwed up a little bit along, along the way. I think we put in the cream way too early, but we did shake it for like 15 or so minutes. Just, just as the legends say. Is it as good as the legends say? Now that's up, that's up for debate. But all things considered, this was very fun so far. Mm. So, to give a bit of a wrap-up to everybody, this was a stream that we're calling Of Fizzes and Flips. It is all about the egg, the egg that goes in your cocktail, whether it's the white, the yellow, the yolk, the, the white, it's still called a white, whether you put the entire egg in there, or maybe just a piece of it, hopefully not the shells. If there's a shell that made it into any of these drinks, we just haven't found it yet. Most of the shells are living in the bucket because the bucket is most definitely enjoying it. What the hay, extra calcium. Right, right. I think our body can digest it. It's just calcium carbonate. I don't know if it passes through it, painfully or not. Look, as long as it made it through the esophagus, we're fine. We're fine, exactly. And if it doesn't get caught in like the diverticuli in your colon or something. Oh, don't. don't. Mm-hmm. Very nasty. Randall says, palms, 151 spiced. It's cheap, but it works. Hey, you know, if the goal is 151 proof rum, any rum will do the trick. So long as it is indeed 151 proof. And it lights on fire. That's the cool mm-hmm. part too. I would love to see, now that I thought about it, it'd be interesting to take like an egg drink, like a fizz like this, with some 151 up on top and just lighting it on fire. Oh my god. You could make it like like a bona fide meringue. Mm-hmm. A bona fide 151 flaming meringue. Or like oh like almost like a what if like a cre- what if a creme brulee gin fizz. It's like a regular it's like a Ramos gin fizz, but it's more like that custardy, eggy flavor to it and more vanilla caramel notes that'd be interesting that sounds cool but in any case uh i digress this has been fun so far the cocktails that we covered this evening um all the way from the beginning from the end the first thing that we did all right oh you're totally good i think i i'm it's it's lost on me exactly what all the recipes and stuff are and i don't really feel like going through every single one of them oh randall oh thank you sir thank you for walking into our bar and finding us at the very end here we had, the first one was the Bosom Caresser, which is technically, uh, if we had to pick between a fizz and a flip, this one is a flip. It was made with two ounces of brandy, or about 59 milliliters, one ounce of white curacao, or some curacao substitute, like an orange liqueur that's just close to the island of curacao, like Citronga. Uh, and we added a dash of grenadine and a single egg yolk. It is a flip because it has egg yolk in it. It is nice and sweet. It tastes good when it's cold. It tastes good when it's warm. And it's got a nice cool like layering effect that happens there. The next cocktail that we covered was the May West Royal Diamond Fizz, which is a very complex one that utilized a couple of different ingredients that had never made their way onto the show before. In particular, half the glass is rimmed with what they call hot sugar. It has granulated sugar, cayenne pepper, and cocoa powder rimming half of the glass with some grapefruit juice. And then the cocktail itself was made with two ounces or 59 milliliters of goji infused bourbon, half an ounce or 15 milliliters of some pomegranate liqueur, one full ounce or 30 milliliters of grapefruit juice you crack an entire egg in there and then after you do your dry shake and wet shake and put it in your glass you top the rest of it off with some brute champagne this was really really cool and to me tasted almost kind of like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich plus the bread which was like a whole new new experience for me i see randall saying you seem like high class streamers in my opinion very rare to see we put we have a lot of production value here this bar a home entertainment thing that I got for free on the internet. These lights, 
They have very cheap diffusing lamps over top of them. The friends. But that took effort. Bother. That took effort. It's all effort. It's a, it's a, it's a, we, it's a, what do you call it? A fixer upper. It's an ongoing project. So we appreciate the compliment, absolutely. All right, so third was mm -hmm. the Dylan Collins. Ooh, which the Dylan Collins was? Is two ounces of vodka. Uh, they usually call for Grey Goose Lesseton. Lesseton. But, but we did not have that, so we just did Grey vodka Goose is expensive. and some extra Tito's. lemon juice. Mm -hmm. um, two ounces of Polini Lemoncello. I did not think to look for Polini. We found Sophia, and Sophia gets the job done. Um, an ounce of fresh lemon juice, mm -hmm. half an egg white, and a Only large half. orange peel. Indeed, we peeled that straight from an actual orange that we grabbed from the store. Next is the Porto Flip. The which is, <laughs> oh my god. Which is 15 milliliters of brandy, so I'm guessing a quarter ounce? About half an ounce. Half an ounce. Indeed. Okay. So, 45 milliliters, or ounce and a half, of red port wine. Excellent. And 10 milliliters. Specifically 10 milliliters. Like a third of an ounce. Third of an ounce of egg yolk. This one had a really weird separation that was happening at the end. And I feel like maybe it was because of the acidity of the port and the fact that there was nothing else kind of evening things out in there. Or maybe we just didn't, didn't shake it enough. I don't really know. Or maybe it's one of those that's meant to be drinking faster. I'm actually going to take a sip of this. I've been thinking about this for a while. And if I don't satisfy my curiosity, I will have nightmares. If we go down, we go down together. Oh, that's very- whoa, that's really dry. Whoa. It's still- it's still- it kind of tastes the same as it did previously. Yeah, it's just got it's more just of a, a uh, dry, more texture contrast. Yeah. It's actually not that bad. If you're into like red wines, like a dry red wine, that okay, Porto Flip, that Tawny- we finished the Pisco Sour first. Indeed we did. So that's going to be two ounces of Pisco Brandy, mm -hmm. three quarters ounce, or um- Okay, um... 22... Oh, whoa, actually, wait. Yeah, 22 milliliters. 22 milliliters mm -hmm. of fresh lime juice. Squeezed fresh from the young lime. Half an ounce or 15 milliliters of simple syrup. Made fresh. A whole egg white. Mm -hmm. And two to three dashes of Angostura bitters for garnish. Garnished which, up on top. Which you can shape to your leisure. Exactly. Using a toothpick. It's that cool, like, foam latte art, except it's Angostura bitters instead. Want to do the last one? Yes, but first, Randall says, most streams seem confused and just do whatever they can to please the viewers. We've got, you can't be a themed cocktail bar without themes. And if we don't do themes, surely we'd be running into walls over here, which we kind of did anyway. Everything winds up going into a bucket if we're dissatisfied with it. But at least we're having fun with it. Absolutely. The final cocktail that we did is the notorious Ramos Gin Fizz. The Ramos Gin Fizz is notorious because of the amount of effort that has to be put in for any bartender to make it. Legend has it that it must be shaken in some way, shape, or form for up to 20 minutes to a half hour to make the perfect Ramos Gin Fizz. Uh, we as the amateurs, novices, but aspiring young mixologists that we are decided to shake it for anywhere between 15 to 20 minutes in the wrong order. Uh, but somehow we did manage to get something at the end that had a foam rise up to the top. It's a very light, lemony, like, uh, very light lemony drink. Is it worth, is the juice in this case worth the squeeze? Was the egg worth the flip? I don't really know. I think that's up to interpretation. For a first try, this is something that I would definitely go back to again, but perhaps with a keener eye than I did previously. Oh, wait. Mm. Uh, may I proffer an idea? Yes, for... Absolutely. Okay. What if for an episode after we've gotten a handful under our uh, belts, I'm we ready. do a, uh, a revisiting uh, stream where we take ones that we kind of done goofed and we try and, you know, fix what could have you know, been better. I actually love that idea. I feel like there was, let me just finish this thought here. I think that, the, now that I think about it, looking back on this so far, so just for context, this show, the way that it currently exists now, has only existed since the beginning of the year. I've been doing cocktails on Twitch for almost two years now, but the way that it exists now with the little bar and theme setup and stuff has only existed for about half a year so far. And it's been an awesome half year. This is extremely fun. But I find that there's a lot of things that you kind of try the first time, you realize you kind of made a mistake on it, or you find something a little bit new, and it'd be fun to go back and redo all those cocktails with the knowledge and like kind of experience that we've gained up since then, to try to see if we can do it better or even like give it a level up something like this 
gin fizz would probably be a nice to go back to. And one in particular, the one thing, uh, one that comes to mind is one that was called the maple leaf sour, which I did like, I think mm. over a year ago. It was really, really good. But I accidentally put an egg white in it. Good night, lovely. My dearest is going to bed. She kisses me before bed. Love you. Bye, love. But it was... Thank you. But that cocktail was called the Maple Leaf Sour, and I accidentally put egg yolk into it, and I wasn't supposed to. So I did it two ways. One was with the egg yolk, and one wasn't, and I actually liked it better with the egg yolk. And I think that was my first experience with a flip ever, and it was totally by accident. (laughs) And since then, I was like, oh, I see why... I can see this. Honestly, the maple leaf kind of sounds like something that should be a flip. Oh my gosh. And to be, and, and the best part about it was I didn't know how to garnish this thing. So I realized that I can just 3D print cookie cutters. So I sliced an apple, 3D printed it a little maple leaf stencil, and I pushed out a maple leaf and garnished it with that. And it worked so well. It's like the perfect like, autumn cocktail. I know, right? And I, I think it was during like the dead of winter. I don't remember when that was, but that was a that was a fun time. So I really like that idea of doing the uh, the revisiting cocktail strand. That would be really cool. Oh, Randall feels like they're uh, at a uh, college bartending class. Well, Thank I you. mean, I did take a bartending class while I was in college. I wasn't a part of the college, and I took a wine class and a beer class. I can't say that I remember any of that information, but you know. <laughs> I mean, I've been meaning to take a bartending class, but I keep putting it off. I would say, having spent the money on bartending classes and didn't actually go through the whole thing, supposedly I am entitled to go back and get a certification if I want to. I've just been too lazy to do so. Hmm. I don't know if it's worth it. Pick up, literally, the best way to get into cocktails is to pick up a, if you don't know what you're doing, pick up a cocktail book, Google some recipes, and get some like, like basic ingredients. I definitely started at the legal age of 21. Definitely not in my fraternity years which has existed since the age of 18. Definitely not that. Um, I have a whole origin story that I'd love to get into sometime. Uh, but yeah, this was, it was good. Get, just get a cocktail book, get some basic ingredients, just figure out what you like first. Make, make some like mimosas, some simple two ingredients, dump it up to three, just make whatever you like. That's easy. It's a fun thing to do. Yeah, once you know what you're doing, uh, mixing it up a little sounds like it will be fun. Technically, it all just builds off of each other. I had no idea what the hell I was doing a year ago, and now I have an entire bar that is completely stocked to the brim with... I like to say every spirit known and imaginable. That's wrong, but it's ever-growing with every single stream. This is fun. So that's everything that we covered so far. Uh, from Of of fizzes and flips is all over. We had some fizzes, like a Ramos Gin Fizz. Fizz. We had some flips, like the Porto Flip, which continues to haunt me even to this day. <laughs> and it was fun and enjoyable. Amy Chow... Thank you very much for joining me on this one. If you had to pick an absolute favorite out of every cocktail that we've covered, has it changed since uh, when I asked you two cocktails ago? Um, I need to revisit this one. That was the May West Royal Diamond Fizz, which is my favorite and still remains to be my favorite. Um, Actually, I want to taste it again. Yeah, it's actually... A tie between that and the uh, mm. the uh, <laughs> the uh, cracked oh up gin fizz. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously though, I will say like the most underrated part of this gin fizz is the uh, it's the cream up on top. It's sour, it's curdled, it's thick, but it's so meringue, and that's awesome. All things considered, well. That's pretty much all we've got this evening. It's about 11 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we have had an absolute blast so far. So with that, we're going to take things over to the final screen of the evening as we say our goodbyes. This has been fun. Scooching here a little bit. We've got a tiny little. We've got a tiny little circle up there. So if it's morning where you are, good morning. Mm-hmm. Rise and shine. Hope your day is delightful. And if it's the evening where you are, like it is for us, as the moon shines above, may you continue your evening if it continues. Or if not, you may have a wonderful rest of your night. Go to sleep. You deserve it. You've probably had a hard day of work, or just a hard day of anything at all, unless you're a night owl. In which case, twilight be good to you, and may dawn greet you with a shining face, as the sun normally does. To everybody out there, no matter where you are, party until next time. And of course, good vibes as always. Amy Chow? Cameron? Thank you very much. And everybody out there, bye.